The ball is being teed up by Fred Cox. And we're about ready to get underway in Super Bowl number nine. The Steelers and the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota in purple jerseys, white numerals, white pants. The Steelers in white jerseys, black numerals, and gold pants. And here's the kickoff into that wind coming down far short. Preston at the 22 over the 25, the 30, the 35. And he waits forward to the 37-yard line. Preston Pearson on the return on a short kickoff at the opening of the ball game. Amos Martin made the stop. The kickoff. Return for the 22, 14 yards for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Fred Cox, at 35 years of age, has had trouble this year putting the kickoff deep. He kicked it very short, only down to the 22, 23 yard line. Steelers come out of the huddle, line up in the eye formation. Grambling's Frank Lewis deployed to the left and Ron Shanklin to the right. They shift out of the eye. And the handoff to Rocky Blyer over the left side of the line. Pile drives forward to the 40 yard line. Slanting over the left side, picking up about three and a half yards as he moves the ball to the 40-yard line, running into Doug Sutherland, a 250-pound defensive tackle from Superior State of Wisconsin, a five-year veteran. It will be second down and about, well, let's make it six yards to go. Good hole opened up by John Cole. Thought Rocky might even make big, bigger yardage than he did. All right, they deploy the Vikings in a 4-3 defense, their basic defense. They do a lot more things defensively now than they did a few years back. Here's a full pivot by Bradshaw, the handoff to Franco Harrison. He slips as he cuts and immediately is covered by Roy Winston. Carl Eller had a hand on him. Drave off balance. He made his cut on the turf and slipped and went down at the 39-yard line for a one-yard loss. So the ball is at the 39. It is going to be third down and seven yards to go for the Steelers. There's the hash mark at the near side of the field. J.D. Fogarty points out that the Vikings start with 14 guys on the field. They bring three off for this play. And now they've got a four-man rush set up again. And Bradshaw looks it over as he calls the signals. Now they've gone with two extra defensive backs. Bradshaw is back to throw. And stumbles as he comes forward and is covered at the 33-yard line. Started to run forward as they put the rush on him. And some of them was covered by Bob Lertzema as he came forward. So we will have to give up the football. Now they went into one of their intricate defenses that time where they flood the secondary with defensive backs. And Bradshaw never had an opportunity to test them because as he came forward, he was hit. Jackie Wallace and Sam McCullum are deep for Minnesota to receive. Bobby Walden is in punt formation. Nate Wright is the up receiver. Wright is dropping back, and Walden will kick with the wind, standing at his own 22-yard line. Walden takes the snap and gets the punt away. Very, very high, wobbly, long, coming down to the 13-yard line. McCullum with the football, coming over the 15. He's hit and nailed at the 18-yard line. McCullum is hit and brought down at the 18-yard line. A 52-yard punt, a four-yard return, and Ed Bradley made the contact for the stop. Yes, Bradley was right down there under it. Walden really booming the football. And one of the things that puzzles us is that the Steelers not only won, uh, got to receive by winning the toss, but they apparently have the win behind them. It may be a funnel effect win, but that time it sure seemed as though it were strongly behind Bobby Walden. 52-yard punt. All right, we have Greenwood, Green, Holmes, White, Ham, Lambert, Russell, Thomas, Blunt, Wagner, and Edwards defensively. Fran Tarkenton is the Minnesota quarterback. Tarkenton calling signals for the Vikings at their own 18-yard line. Rolls right, he's going to throw, and he fires, and the ball is caught, and it is ruled complete on the sideline at the far side at the 34. A leaping catch by John Gilliam. Gilliam, a 6'1", 195-pounder, in his eighth year out of North Carolina State. Made the catch for the Minnesota Vikings. Gilliam on the season had 26 catches for 578 yards. A 14-yard pass and run play with very little running because he came down at the sideline. A first down for Minnesota. First down 10 for the Vikings as Tarkenton brings them up to the line of scrimmage. Tarkenton calls the signal. He fakes. He's back to throw. Firing downfield. A leaping try. Incomplete at the 47-yard line. Stu Boyd's a tight end. An angle through the secondary covered by Jack Ham and Jack Lambert. 
The defensive line reacted beautifully to Tarkinson that time. He had to unload the football, and he overthrew his receiver. And he overthrew him so much that Mike Wagner, had he been able to get over there just a little faster, would have had an interception. I'm not faulting Wagner. He had no chance to get it, but he was running for that football. Nobody was near it. Second down, 10 Minnesota. The opening moments of the ball game. There's no score. The Vikings at their own 34-yard line. They split it in to the left. John Gilliam. They flank Jim Lash out to the right. They're operating out of a tight eye. And handoff inside. The play is broken up. Dave Osborne finds little running room up the middle. Joe Green and Ernie Holmes were there to meet him. As he plowed into the middle of the line and found nothing there but the steel curtain. And he comes down apparently short of the 35-yard line with Jack Lambert down at the bottom of the play. Let's see where they put the football. They're still handling it, and they're going to change footballs. And it apparently is going to be right at the 35-yard line. PA announcer says Dwight White made the stop. That brings a partisan cheer from the Steeler fans. It will be third and nine. Remember, Mad Dog is playing. After having been fighting an attack of pleurisy throughout the week, playing at defensive right end. It is third down nine for the Minnesota Vikings. They flank right, split left, and Tarkinson drops back, now scrambling to the right and throwing upfield on the far side, and the catch is incomplete at the 49-yard line. John Gilliam at the sideline, covered by J.T. Thomas. Reached for the football, could not hold it. It is knocked away, incomplete, and now Minnesota will give it back to the Steelers. And the Steelers defense had Andy Russell blitzing, but Minnesota's pass protection picked him up very nicely. Tarkinson had the time to throw, but nothing came of it. So, okay, the Vikings will have to make their first kind of the ball game. They're facing fourth down and nine at their 35-yard line. Mike Eyshide with an average of 36.1 as compared to Bobby Walden's average of 39 yards per kick. Eyshide standing at his own 21. Edwards and Swan deep. The punt carries right to left. High snap. Eyshide gets it away. Here it comes down and waiting for it is Swan. Running to his left comes over the 30. Goes to the 35, the 40. And is shot down as he crosses the 40-yard line at the Pittsburgh 41 the tackle made on the far side of the field by Dave Kingswriter. A 40-yard punt, a return of 16 yards by Lynn Swan, the rookie, number one draft pick from Southern California. There is a break in the Super Bowl action. We'll be right back. Have picked up seven yards. They'll put the ball in play at their own 41-yard line. Jack? Pittsburgh moving left to right here at Tulane Stadium in New Orleans, Louisiana. Terry Bradshaw out of Louisiana Tech in his home territory sets the club at the 41-and-a-half-yard line. Minnesota comes over. Carl Eller crosses the line of scrimmage. Now let's see what the ruling will be. The officials confer. Excuse me. The illegal procedure against the Steelers. And speaking of Carl Eller, some of the speculation surrounding this game is whether his bum knee of two years ago uh, is a hindrance to him or not. Some Steeler players say that man's looked fantastic on films. Others tell me privately that he seems to protect his knee. So we'll just see how he plays today. First penalty of the ball game takes the ball back to the Steeler. 37, first and 15. Shanklin to the right, Lewis to the left. They shift out of the eye. Franco and Rocky are the running backs. Hand off to Rocky through the middle of the 40, the 45, the 50. Drives into Minnesota territory down to the 45-yard line. Great pole opened up for Rocky Blyer. And he came through with Paul Kraut making the saving stop. Uh, helped out by Jeff Wright at the Minnesota 45-yard line. Wright, the four-year veteran from Minnesota, Krause in his 11th year from Iowa, and they saved the day because Flyer was headed downfield. He was stopped at the Minnesota 45. First down, a 19-yard pickup for Rocky Blyer with a great job done by his offensive line. Minnesota in a 4-3, pulling a backer up close on the left side. Here's the handoff, Franco Harris hitting left, diving, coming down near the 40-yard line. Jim Marshall. At the bottom of the play for the Minnesota Vikings in his 15th year from Ohio State. And Alan Page, the eight-year veteran from Notre Dame. In on the stop, they will spot the ball at the Minnesota 41. It will be second down six. And the Steeler line is executing the traps that worked so beautifully against the Oakland Raiders, playing the mini Vikes for suckers. All right, this time we put Frank Lewis in the slot to the right, and we also pull Rocky Blyer over into a double slot right, leaving one setback, Franco Harris. And here's a quick pitch to Harris with blockers out there. It doesn't work. He's nailed at the 45, falls at the 44-yard line, and the penalty marker goes down. Harris goes down at the 44-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings. Jeff Wright stops the play. As they said, a lot of blocking up to the right side. We have a personal foul clipping called against the Steelers. Wow. 
Well, Ron Shanklin was trying to take out Jeff Wright. He couldn't do it. Wright steamroared him. Another stealer came up. I didn't catch who it was. It might have been Gordy Gravel came up to help, and perhaps he was the one who committed the clip, but I cannot be certain of that. It's a tough penalty, a major penalty against the Steelers, just as they had things rolling on the ground. It goes back to the previous spot for a 15-yard mark off from the Minnesota 41-yard line. Takes the ball back to the Steeler 44. The second penalty for a total of 20 yards. And we have not yet taken five minutes off the clock in the first quarter. 10.35 to play in the opening period. And there is no score in the ball game here at New Orleans. Frank Lewis deploys to the left and flanking right is Ron Shanklin. They ship Blyer off the top of the eye to the left side and Minnesota has four men down in front. Here is a quick flip into the left flat to Frank Lewis. He has blocking comes over the 50 and drives back to the Minnesota 45 yard line. Wally Hilgenberg and Paul Krause team up on the stop. Great blocking that time by Jim Clack as the pass went into the left flat very quickly. John Cole working on the play, and the ball is down to the Minnesota 44. A 12-yard gain on the pass play. It will be second down and nine. And Cole just exploded the cornerback, Jackie Wallace. He just knocked him flying. All right, now they're switching their defenses again. They bring three men off the field, and they're going with a flood of defensive backs. Pittsburgh on third down and nine yards to go. Bradshaw backs up. They're after him. They've got Gary Bradshaw. And he's being sacked. Back to Pittsburgh 48-yard line. As Alan Page and Bob Lurtzema have got to him on a great rush the second time that Bradshaw's been sacked this afternoon. Jim Clack just couldn't handle Alan Page. He's a great one, of course, one of the top linemen in the National Football League. And he rolled past Clack and sacked Bradshaw. And that's something you see very seldom in Steeler football games. Walden, who had a 52-yard punt on his first attempt, is in punt formation again. Nate Wright is in the middle. They'll put him on the left side as Bobby looks downfield. Wallace and McCollum are back there. Here's the punt. Wobbly. It's going to be a tough one to handle. Bouncing high, pulled down at the 14-yard line. Nate Wright with the football has no running room, and the Steelers tail it. One of those Walden gems, Donnie Schell, the rookie, the first man down to get to him. It was only a 39-yard punt, but there was a minus one-yard return on the kick. The Super Bowl continues after this brief timeout. On that punt, Big Dave Revis did not make the tackle, but he was down there first, and I do believe he caused the return man a little consternation and enabled his teammates, Steeler teammates, to make that tackle at the Minnesota 14-yard line. The Vikes in the hole. At the 14-yard line, first down, 10 from the eye. The handoff is given to Chuck Foreman, and Foreman is nailed by Jack Ham. Foreman running to his right, and Ham gets him for a loss back near the 12-yard line. We've got a massive listening audience throughout the western Pennsylvania area around Pittsburgh this afternoon. We thank you for being with us throughout the season and with us on this Super Bowl afternoon. And included in those listeners is four-year-old Sean Fogarty, J.D. Fogarty's little boy who yesterday fell and banged his cheek while his dad was down there, and he's hospitalized. And we want to tell him that we're going to get back there with the victory for him, and he's going to be okay, and we're very happy to have him listening. Right, J.D.? So little Sean Fogarty at four years old is following us with a lot of other people. Second down, 12. Tarkenton drops back. Tarkenton fires. Look out, he caught it at the 17-yard line. A sharply thrown pass up to the 17-yard line as he hits Dave Osborne coming out of the backfield and Jack Ham and Jack Lambert close in for the stop. So Osborne, the 10-year veteran from North Dakota, makes his first catch of the afternoon. Now the Steelers will gladly give Tarkenton that pass. He had 12 yards to go for a first down. He was second and 12, so they give him a little four-yard pass. Okay, and they belt the guy who catches it, and that's good defense. Osborne caught 29 passes during the regular season. It is third down now and eight yards to go. This time they deploy a back in the slot to the left side. And Tarkenton is calling the signals. Tarkenton is back and looking again. Tarkenton's pass is blocked by L.C. Greenwood coming out of his hand. L.C. blocked the pass and was looking for the interception, could not get to the football. The big guy was there, and as Clark threw the ball, L.C. blocked it incomplete, and again, Minnesota will punt. Fantastic pass rush by L.C. Greenwood, who went right up against all pro tackle Ron Yarry. Drove him right back against Tarkenton, kept the hand high, and blocked the pass. Terrific battle. L.C. won it. This time, Ishide is at his own two-yard line, kicking against the wind. 
We have Swan and Edwards deep. Here's Eyshide getting a high snap again and getting the punt away. Wobbly, it'll be tough to handle. Bouncing at the 40, over the 45, and they're going to stay away from the football. Tough to handle. It will be down by the Vikes at the Pittsburgh 47. You saw Swan look at it and then wave off Glenn Edwards. There's a flag down on the play, a 37-yard punt with no return. A penalty marker at the Minnesota 29-yard line. We've already had two penalties against the Steelers. Thus far, none against the Vikings. By the way, Jack, let's not get hard on the officials no matter what they do today because Bernie Ullman, the referee, he's worked three Steeler ball games in 1974 and the Steelers won them all. They're 3-0 and with Bernie Ullman. Oh, we'll never get hard on the officials. <laughs> no way. The indication is that it's going to be against the Vikings and we have a tremendous gathering of players out there to hear the decision of the officials and the choice of options on the play. Clipping call against Minnesota. And now the consultation on the play. The penalty marker is down at the 29-yard line and the clipping call against the Vikings. Now, you normally wouldn't get a clipping call down in that part of the ball field on a punt, but it was a funny punt, a little screwy punt, so perhaps anything could happen. The ball player is not knowing quite how to uh, play that punt. So we're getting the 15-yard mark-off against the Minnesota Vikings. Check that, half the distance from the previous spot. Get that one correct, which will take it back to the 8-yard line. So it comes back to the previous spot. And half the distance to the goal line. And 8-yard mark-off. Back to the eight-yard line. This time, Eyshide will stand in his own end zone. Again, Swan and Edwards are deep to receive for the Steelers. And Eyshide kicking into that win. Here's the snap to Eyshide and his punt. Low trajectory, and Edwards takes it at the 44. Gives ground behind the 45, running to the right. Needs a block from Swan, doesn't get it. He's nailed at the 44-yard line. He is nailed. Down to get him that time was Matt Blair on a 35-yard punt with no return as he ran to his right and got back to the point where he'd received the punt. But the Steelers pick up nine yards on the exchange of the football, roughly, and they have it now at the Minnesota 44. And there, uh, the, the penalty did work out well for the Steelers. They'd have been back around their own 46-yard line. Instead, they're well into Viking territory. All right, it's first down and 10 yards to go at the Viking 44. 7.20 to play in the first quarter. Nothing, nothing. Terry Bradshaw fakes to Harris, fires the pass, and it's incomplete at the 30. Coming down, cutting on a diagonal. Frank Lewis had the ball come in a little low on him, could not reach it, could not handle it. Lost it, and Jackie Wallace covered, did not figure on the play. The pass was on the mark, but appeared to be a little low, and Lewis could not handle it. Second pass for the Steelers with one completed. Minnesota has thrown five times and completed two thus far this afternoon. No score in the ballgame. Pittsburgh moving left to right as we view the game for you at Tulane Stadium in New Orleans. Eller, Sutherland, Page, and Marshall in the front four for the Minnesota Vikings. Bradshaw, delayed handoff, goes to Franco. Franco finds a hole for short distance. He is near the 41-yard line. He'll pick up about three yards on the play as he was brought down by Alan Page and Roy Winston. Page, the defensive right tackle, and Winston... The left linebacker, Winston, a 13-year veteran on the left side, Jeff Seaman in his third year from Stanford in the middle, and Wally Hilgenberg on the right side. Nate Wright and Jackie Wallace are the cornerbacks. Jeff Wright and Paul Krause are the safeties. Minnesota on defense. Pittsburgh third and seven as they place the ball at the Minnesota 42. Bradshaw calling the signals for the Pittsburgh Steelers in a scoreless ball game. Terry Bradshaw takes. Bradshaw is back to throw. He fires, and it is caught at the 26-yard line by Larry Brown, the tight end. He was sliding into the turf as he took the football for a first down. Covered on the play by Randy Potal at the 26-yard line. The Steelers have completed the pass, and it is first and 10, a 16-yard gain on the play. And it was a dandy catch, a sliding catch by Larry Brown. Bradshaw put it there. He, he was sliding. I think that turf was giving him a little trouble, but he held on. Steelers at the 26-yard line. All right, Bradshaw is calling signals. Bradshaw gives the handoff to Blyer, slashing through the middle, then driving, digging. He's down near the 22-yard line. Rocky Blyer had 
rather limited running room as he ran into the arms of Wally Hilgenberg and Roy Winston. But he carried them for an extra yard or two and takes the football to the 22-yard line. And it's going to be second down. Let's we'll see where they place it finally. The nose of it at the 22, second down and six. Blyer has carried three times for 27 yards. Nine yards per carry on the average. All right, Bradshaw sets his club, second down and six. It's a long six. Inches outside the Minnesota 22. The handoff to Franco cuts into the middle, cuts back to his right, and is brought down at the 20-yard line. Carl Eller was there to meet him, along with Jim Marshall. As he slanted into the center of the line, running left and cutting back to the right, he takes it to the 20-yard line. They, they mark it at the 20 and a half, and it's going to be third down, four and a half. And, of course, this looks like a passing down. Bradshaw has thrown three times, completed two. There's only incompletion, actually. I thought Frank Lewis should have had the ball, so Bradshaw has been on the mark. He's been confident. Let's see what happens. All right. They bring Terry Brown and Randy Potal giving them six defensive backs Bradshaw drops back throws a little high for Frank Lewis who was cutting on a diagonal at the 10 in front of Jackie Wallace could not handle it it was too high for him and the pass is incomplete and that is going to bring on Roy Girella the Pittsburgh kicking specialist who led the AFC in scoring absolutely phenomenal year and Jarella will be kicking with Walden holding. And he's got distance. Bobby will be holding at the 28-yard line. A 38-yard attempt by Jarella. Walden puts it down. Jarella kicks it. And it is no good. It is off to the left for Roy Jarella. So the field goal try does not work. And Minnesota takes over at its own 20. Well, it's something the sidewinders... Uh grabbed that hook and he hooked it went off to the left and it'll be still a scoreless ball game there's a break in the Super Bowl action and we'll be right back okay the Vikings put the ball back into play just beyond their 20 yard line after Roy Jarella's unsuccessful field goal attempt slot right formation for Minnesota here's Tarkenton with the play flow to the left giving it to Foreman and he is nailed Andy Russell took his pins out from under him and he was covered by Mel Blunt as he crossed the 20 yard line and leaned forward to the 21 and down he goes and Minnesota tested the right side of the Steeler defense without success nice penetration by Andy Russell he doesn't figure to see too much action from Fran Tarkenton's throwing today because Tarkenton again likes to throw to the right but Andy's playing good ball down there all right, it is second down and nine. Tarkenton rolling right with a flag down. Tarkenton and Scott slips away. Gets away from Greenwood. Fires the football incomplete. They got to Tarkenton, but he got rid of the football. Elsie Greenwood almost had him once. Got up and went after him in full pursuit along with Dwight White. And Tarkenton threw the ball out of desperation into the turf upfield incomplete. And we have an illegal motion call against Minnesota. So they can either take that play or they can take a five-yard penalty and let Minnesota try it second down over again. White, White very nearly nailing Tarkenton back at the 12-yard line. Dwight moving not at all like a guy suffering from porousy. He looked pretty good on that play. The Steelers, although the ball game is scoreless with 3.54 still remaining in the first period, the Steelers have dominated the action, keeping the Vikings in the hole except on the Vikes' first a possession when they did pick up a first down, but it's been largely the Steelers. Well, I've kidded you about your fellow sports writers overusing the word suffering, but I'll tell you what, this kid has suffered with that pleurisy this week. I'll tell you that, you just don't figure to play with that kind of thing. All right, here they come on third down nine. The Steelers decline the penalty. A single setback, man in the slot wide to the left side. And here is Tarkenton back. Tarkenton throwing to the near side, and it is pulled in. Out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Andy Russell in pursuit of John Gilliam. And Gilliam coming to the sideline is ruled out of bounds on the catch. And Pittsburgh will get the ball back on a punt. That is the sixth pass for Tarkenton with two of them completed. And Mike Eyshide, who has been a busy man, is coming on. Tarkenton, two for seven, 18 yards. I, I think I said six. He is two for seven, 18 yards.
All right, Edwards and Swan are back. Eyeshide from his own eight-yard line. Gets the punt away. Wobbly up into the wind. And coming down, bouncing at the Minnesota 49 into Pittsburgh territory at the 47. And they had good coverage downfield, and the ball is down. This ball game has been played in the first quarter in the same section of the field throughout the afternoon. It was a 32-yard punt for the Minnesota Vikings, and the Steelers put it in play at their own 47. And let's not be too disheartened because Roy Jarella missed that field goal attempt because remember what happened in Oakland. Okay, he came back, the Steelers kept plugging, and they came out on top. All right, 3.38 to play in the first quarter. That's important because that's when we change ends of the field and start going into the wind. Hand off to Blyer. Blyer cuts over the right side and comes across the 50 down to the 48-yard line. Man, he slipped out of the arms of Carl Eller, and Jeff Seaman finally got him at the Minnesota 48. And Blyer running beautifully again, picks up five yards on that carry. What a story this guy has made this year. Out of that sensational story that he created, when he volunteered and went to Vietnam, was severely wounded and came back and kept plugging until he worked his way after six years in the league into a starting position. Slot left. Shanklin is in the slot. And here is the handoff on an end around, coming to Shanklin, running to the right at the 50, slips and goes down at the Minnesota 49 as he is covered by Nate Wright. Got penalty markers down on the play. And apparently there may be a footing problem down there because we've seen a lot of slipping on cuts. Well, back on the first series that the Steelers had the ball, we saw Franco slip on the second down run. Then we saw Bradshaw slip when he tried to escape the pocket. So the Steelers do appear to have some uh, trouble keeping their feet on this polyturf surface, though they seem to speak very favorably of it after practicing here. They said that it gives you maybe a half inch of give. They like it. And, uh, however, they're not staying on their feet very well today. Bradshaw's watching as the official is preparing to mark off five yards very carefully against the Vikings. They're taking extra care because the stepping off of the penalty is critical depending upon where the stake is located on the far side of the field. Now they're bringing the sticks out in order to place the ball. The official went over and measured. He'll place the ball down five yards forward, but we'll do it very carefully with the uh, yard markers in mind, meaning that the Steelers are just short of a first down, and now they've got maybe a foot to go. Here comes the signal, an offside call against the Minnesota Vikings. That is the second call for a total of 13 yards against the Vikings this afternoon. Second down and inches for a first down at the Viking 43-yard line. Ray Mansfield, the 12-year veteran from Washington, goes over the football. We deploy Lewis to the left, Shanklin to the right, shifting out of the eye formation. Bradshaw is the quarterback. Full pivot gives the ball to Franco. He hesitates, comes over the right side, the 40, the 35, the 30, inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Franco Harris stopped by Nate Wright and Jim Marshall as he gave him a Franco move, came off the right side, found his hole, and... Jerry Mullins and Gordy Gravel had the hole waiting for him. They placed the ball at the 29-yard line after a 14-yard carry. Pittsburgh's third first down of the afternoon. They're in Viking territory at the 29. Two minutes and 17 seconds on a turning clock in the first quarter. No score in the ballgame. Bradshaw shifts them out of the eye. The running backs are set wide. And a fake this time. Bradshaw rolling right. He's pulled most of them. He keeps his footing across the 20 and out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Nate Wright was almost fooled. He was fooled enough that Bradshaw was able to get additional yardage on him. But at the same time, in trying to avoid Wright, Terry lost his balance and came out of bounds. But in the process, he moves the ball to the 18 for a first down. An 11-yard pickup in that time, Iron. They fooled the Viking defense with the exception of Wright, and he was almost touchdown bound. Yes, Wright coming up there to try to stop him. Ron Shanklin had an easy hit on Wright, but he missed him. And Bradshaw simply gave him the slip all by himself on his own. At the 18-yard line, it is first down and 10 yards to go. No score in the ball game. The Steelers in Viking territory. Here's a handoff to Franco Harris hitting right, and he's stopped. Just a little short of the line of scrimmage, as it would appear, hit by Alan Page, the 245-pounder, and Doug Sutherland, the 250-pounder, in the middle of the Minnesota defensive line. 
So the ball is spotted back at the 18 and a half yard line. There was no gain, no loss. Second down and 10 yards to go. So the Steelers, you might say, have two, used two gadget plays, the bootleg and the end of run, although the bootleg Bradshaw is so fond of, you perhaps cannot call it a gadget. We got Bradshaw calling the signals on second down 10. Here's the handoff, and the ball is given to Franco. Hits into the middle of the line, spinning and fighting, and he goes down to the 16-yard line. Franco Harris, the ball carrier. Alan Page at the bottom of the play for the Minnesota Vikings at the 16. So we've got two great defenses matched up here this afternoon. Harris has carried seven times for 24 yards, and here come two extra backs on. Terry Brown and Randy Podal come on the field, and at the same time, they will bring Hilgenberg and Winston off. So they've got six defensive backs in there on third down and eight at the Minnesota 16-yard line. Bradshaw backs up. Bradshaw throwing to the far side, and it is broken up at the goal line by Jackie Wallace on a pass intended for Frank Lewis as Lewis ran a pattern down to the goal line and across to the far side of the field in the end zone, and Jackie Wallace... In his first year out of Arizona, reached in and broke it up. That's right. The pass was well thrown. It was on the mark, but Wallace made a fine defensive play, sticking that right hand of his in there just in the nick of time to break it up. So here's Torello with another field goal attempt. 23-yard line, 33 yards out. Wall in the holder. A stiff win behind Roy Girella. That win may be making it a little tricky. The ball is down. It's fumbled by Walden. Walden picks it up and runs with it to the left. Walden splits and goes down and is covered at the 22-yard line. Walden could not handle the snap. Bobbled it, picked the ball up. He was nailed by Jeff Seaman as he ran to the left at the 22-and-a-half-yard line. And that's where Minnesota takes over the football. The Vikings at their own 22 and a half with 32 seconds remaining in a scoreless first quarter. Well, doggone it, the Steelers have uh, pretty well lambasted the Vikings here through most of the first period, through this almost complete first period, and yet the ball game remains scoreless with the Vikings putting the ball in play now at their 22 and a half. Jim Lash deploys to the right. They put Gilliam in the slot out to the right side and set a flanker, one of their running backs to the left, and they give the ball off to Dave Osborne, and Osborne is nailed, trying to get off the left side of the line. Osborne runs into the arms of Mad Dog White, and Dwight White has him and will not let him progress any further. Let's see where they mark the forward progress. They're putting the nose of the football at the 23-yard line. They give him a half yard. It will be second down, nine and a half yards to go. Now, Tarkenton thus far this afternoon on passing is stuck to the sideline patterns. They've had difficulty moving the football on the ground against the Steelers. We're coming down to the end of the first quarter of the ball game. And there it is, the end of the first period with no score. Quick statistics in the first quarter. The Steelers passing went two for five, 28 yards. Rushing 10 carries for 54 yards. The Vikings rushing four times, minus one rushing. Minus one rushing. Well, that's even better than at Oakland, where the best that the Raiders could do was a total of 29 yards rushing the entire ball game. That Steeler defense has been uh, today what it has been most of the season, all season long, in fact, which is to say the toughest defense in the National Football League. Tarkenton drops back to pass. Rolling right now. Looking. Throwing the short pass up to the 28. The ball pulled in by Osborne. Coming over the 30 and out of bounds on the near side. Chuck Foreman, not Osborne, pulled it in. And Mike Wagner covered him coming out on the near side of the field. As Tarkenton ran to the right that time. And Foreman became his target. And Wagner made the stop. And the game was good for 12 yards. And Minnesota picks up a first down. The second of the afternoon for the Vikings. Well, Tarkenton had the kind of protection he liked on that right rollout. L.C. being wiped out of the play. The linebacker coming in just a shade too late to break up the pass. Jack Ham and Foreman coming out of the backfield, darting out of there to take it. He's a good receiver. Vikings at their own 35-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go from the I formation. And a fake by Tarkenton, rolling right and looking. Now throwing it's blocked. L.C. Greenwood up in the air, five yards in front of Tarkenton to block the pass. Tarkenton being pursued by Ernie Holmes, who pats Tark on the back as he walks back into the huddle. And Greenwood making a sensational play at least five yards away from Tarkenton to go up in the air and block that pass. 
Yes, the Steeler defense may not sack Tarkenton all day because he's extremely tough to sack, rolling out as he does. But make no mistake about it, they are putting tough pressure on the man. Tough pressure. All right, Pittsburgh with Greenwood, Green, Holmes, and White up front. Ham, Lambert, and Russell, the backers. Thomas and Blunt on the corners. Wagner and Edwards are the safeties. Minnesota, second down 10 at its own 35-yard line, operating out of the eye formation. And to give inside, and it is nailed. Ernie Holmes has Dave Osborne. Holy mackerel. The handoff went to Osborne, and as quickly as he got the ball, Holmes had him. His arms around him. And it's going to be a loss of a yard, maybe two yards. Let's see where they put the football. They're marking it at the 34, a one-yard loss. So now their total rushing yardage is minus two. Foreman has carried twice for a minus two. Osborne three times. He's at zero. They're deploying Chuck Foreman wide to the right. They're putting... Gilliam in the slot to the left, inside of Jim Lash, who is wide of the far side of the field. A single running back. And here's Tarkenton back to throw. And they're leaping in front of him. Now he scrambles. Now they're after him. He scrambled all the way back to his own 10-yard line and throws the ball upfield, and the pass is broken up at the 33-yard line. Holy smokes, was he being pursued. Andy Russell broke up the pass, which finally was intended for John Gilliam. Or was it Dave Osborne? No, Gilliam, Jack. Gilliam. Intended for Gilliam. Upfield at the 33-yard line. And Tarkenton was all the way back to his 10. And the Steelers, in pursuit of him, are leaping in the air. Joe Green leaping up, then running again. Leaping up, running at him. And he throws to Gilliam Russell. Almost had the interception. Gilliam did not like, like the way Lambert hit him after the play was over. And he wanted to fight Jack Lambert. He a lot. Mike Eyshide at his own 20 in punt formation. Swan and Edwards are deep for the Steelers. This time, Eyshide kicks with the win for the first time. Eyshide gets away a low trajectory punt. And it is coming down to Edwards. And he's behind the 30, coming out over the 35. He is caught. Flags go down, and he's brought down at the 35-yard line. Penalty markers go down on a 38-yard punt and a 7-yard return by Glenn Edwards. Coming from his own 28 to his own 35-yard line, where it is going to be first down and 10 yards to go for the Pittsburgh Steelers. In the second quarter, they're moving right to left. No score in Super Bowl IX at Tulane Stadium in New Orleans, Louisiana. Jack Fleming with Byron Cope bringing you the play-by-play -play coverage of the Super Bowl activity. Well, I tell you, I've never seen Joe Green make quite that kind of a pass rush as long as I've been watching him. Tarkenton taking an uncharacteristic deep drop on that third down play. Joe rushing in partway, then leaping in the air with his hands up, coming down, racing at him again. Tarkenton back, backpedaling. Joe leaping up again. He took a 30-yard drop, Tarkenton did on the play. Now let's see what the penalty flags are about. They're giving us a tripping call will be against the Steelers. And they're taking the ball back to the 15-yard line. A 15-yard mark-off from the 30 back to the 15. Total of 35 yards in penalties against Pittsburgh. This one hurts. This is the uh, worst field position we've had at the start of a drive. Yes, that's right, Jack. The Steelers have had good field position all day until now. I think the worst position they had was at their own 31-yard line at the start of the game. Harry Bradshaw sets his running backs wide. Bradshaw gives a deep handoff to Harris. Harris running to the right side, and he's out of bounds on the far side at the 20-yard line. The Statue of Liberty play with Bradshaw dropping back giving the underhand handoff to Franco Harris and Jeff Seaman making the stop as the play carried to the far side of the field to the right. About a five-yard gain on the play. We're going to pause now for station identification. All right, the wide receivers now are rookies, John Stallworth and Lynn Swan. Steelers line up with Stallworth to the left and Swan flanking to the right. The running backs are Harris and Blyer. Here's a fake to Blyer. And Bradshaw is looking and throwing, trying to get the bomb down to Stallworth. And it is broken up at the Minnesota 37-yard line. Covering the play beautifully, Jackie Wallace with one hand. Reaching out to get a hand on that football and trying to hold on to it. Could not quite do it. Pass is incomplete. Yes, Jackie Wallace almost 
intercepting that pass, which was a might underthrown, but Jackie Wallace was staying with Stallworth. Stallworth got behind him, but Jackie was staying with him step for step. Jackie Wallace is playing a good ball game. He saved uh, a touchdown when Bradshaw threw earlier in the game to Frank Lewis in the corner of the end zone, and Jackie got an, a hand in there just, on, just in time. Jim Marshall is out. Bob Lertzema, who is a better pass rusher, is in there on what they feel is a passing situation at third and five. And Bradshaw drops back. Bradshaw stands there and fires up to the 31-yard line. And the pass is caught by Lynn Swan, who fights his way forward to the 36. Swan caught the pass, was immediately hit by Terry Brown. And the penalty marker is down. An interference call against the Pittsburgh Steelers. A 16-yard pass is negated. So the ball comes back to the 20-yard line. And they take it back to the 10, half the distance to the goal line. And the Steelers are charged with offensive pass interference. Well, it was a heck of a catch in traffic, but he may have called Swan for doing the pushing off. The Vikings now have taken out all of their linebackers and they're flooding the secondary. They're using five men to rush and it's a 5-6 defense as they flood the secondary with six defensive backs, third and 15. Here's the handoff to Blyer, comes up little, fumbles the football, dives forward for it, can't get it, and the Minnesota Vikings have it at the Pittsburgh 24-yard line. Rocky had the hole, came charging through it, but the football was knocked away from him and the Minnesota Vikings recover. Randy Fodel recovers the ball for the Vikings at the Pittsburgh 24-yard line on a 13-yard carry, but the ball came out of his arms, and now the Vikings get the first big break that they've had in the game. Yes, Rocky lost the ball as he saw daylight. He raced after it, got his mitts on it again, but couldn't hold it, and the Vikes are in business. At the 24-yard line, the Vikings in Pittsburgh territory, first and 10. Fran Tarkenton handles the football, gives off on a right side drive by Dave Osborne, goes for short yardage. They're going to give him the 21-yard line, 21 and a half, Jack Lambert making the tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They spot the ball at the 22. So it's a two-yard game on the play for Osborne. And the ball is at the 22-yard line. On the season, Osborne carried... 131 times, 514 yards. Foreman had a 777-yard season, each of them averaging 3.9 yards per carry. Foreman had nine touchdowns. Osborne had four. Second down, eight. Tarkenton steps under center. Got his split end to the left, his flanker to the right. And Tarkenton fakes as he drops back. Tarkenton is deep. Tarkenton throws, lobs it out to the right side, and it's in and out of the hands of Chuck Foreman at the 20. As Foreman came down, came well over and back, and it was a desperation throw. Andy Russell was in pursuit along with J.T. Thomas, but a desperation throw by Tarkenton who was under a heavy rush, got rid of the football. Foreman could not hold it, so Tarkenton is 3 for 11 for 30 yards. And Joe Green again in his jumping routine, and apparently that's the way he's going to play Tarkenton. Rather than rush him headlong, he knows Tarkenton can move laterally with alacrity, so he's going to get up in the air and try to block the pass or discourage Fran from throwing it until it's too late. That's going to be Joe's style, apparently, against Tarkenton's drop. Minnesota deploys Jim Lash to the far side wide. They put Gilliam in the slot out there, and they bring Foreman out as a flanker wide to the right side. And Tarkenton drops back, now rolls a little right and stops, and he can't get to him. He fires downfield, and it's too high at the five-yard line. A leaping cry by Chuck Foreman. Unsuccessful, coming up to make the hit on him, Mike Wagner. And again, the on-rushing Steelers were after Tarkenton, with Greenwood and Green doing a fantastic job of leaping up in front of him. The pass came down too high. Foreman could not handle it. And Fred Cox is on. So Cox will try for the field goal. Roy Jarella has missed one this afternoon, and then one was mishandled. Bobby Walden, the holder, could not handle it, and it was unsuccessful. But now Cox, with Paul Krause holding at the 29-yard line, a 39-yard attempt in a nothing-nothing ball game. The snap of the ball, Krause puts it down, Cox kicks it, and it is no good, off to the right. So the wind is a problem. That has to be the problem. We've got timeout down on the field with a break in the action. We'll be right back. 
Gorillas, Gorillas have struck again. They came off their strike. They hung out their banner down here. It said Mon City Freddy Choke. Steelers at their own 22-yard line. Jack? All right. The Steelers at their own 22. They've given the Vikings zero rushing this afternoon and 30 yards passing. But now they've got to see what they can do. Here's a handoff to Blyer. Blyer on a cross buck to the left side will get about a yard. And he ran into a tough Viking defense on that carry. Jim Marshall and Wally Hilgenberg anchor it on that side. And Rocky will get... Let's see where they're finally going to put it down. It looks like a very slight loss on the play. They set it back at the line of scrimmage, so there's no gain on the play. Second down and 10 yards to go. Eller, Sutherland, Page, Marshall up front, Winston, Seaman, Hilgenberg, the linebackers, Wright and Wallace are the quarterbacks, and Jeff Wright and Paul Krause are the safeties. They shift out of the eye. To the right side, Rocky Blyer. Here's Bradshaw taking, giving to Franco. Pile driving into the right side of the line and coming forward to the 24-yard line. He'll get about two and a half yards on the carry. And down at the bottom of the play was Roy Winston, the left side linebacker, in his 13th year from LSU, back in home territory. And now here they come with two extra defensive backs, and they also bring Bob Lurtsum on for the rush. And off the field come all of the linebackers. So they go with a five-man line and six defensive backs. A 5-6 defense. Pittsburgh ready to go against it. Third down and... Seven. Here's the quick flip. And the ball complete up to the 35-yard line to John Scholar. Scholar's coming over the 40 to the 45 and down at the 46-yard line with Paul Krause and Jackie Wallace making the stop. So they were ready for that defense, and Scholar came off the line and took the very quick flip from Bradshaw, advancing the ball to the 46-yard line, first and 10. Gain of 22 yards on the play. Yes, a beautifully executed play. They let the lineman rush. And Bradshaw got rid of it with one step back. Swish, boom, right there. And the Steelers are now moving the ball, and they're out at their own 46-yard line. 10-19 to play in the first half. No score in the ball game. All right. Minnesota on defense. The handoff of the lead. Going to Rocky Blair, shooting over the right side of the line across the 50 and down to the Minnesota 48. Jeff Seaman made the stop. And they're doing some intricate blocking in there, Byron, as that time he gave the ball to the second man through who was Blyer, and he found the hole over the right side and came across the 50, and Rocky has seven carries for 50 yards. Well, that's that nice tackle trap that they worked so well on Art Toms in the championship game out in Oakland. Second down and four yards to go. Six-yard gain on the play. Blyer shifts off the eye to the right side. Bradshaw, the quarterback. Bradshaw pivots, gives it to Franco. He goes into the right side of the line and plows forward very close to the Minnesota 45. He'll be a yard short of a first down. Possibly a yard and a half short of a first down with Alan Page and Doug Sutherland and Jeff Seaman at the bottom of the stop. They place the ball at the 46-yard line. Third down, a yard and a half to make for a first down, and the Steelers are back in Viking territory and operating in very healthy fashion. And this- Mike Webster is in replacing Lynn Swan now for the Steelers. And you know what that means. Jerry Mullins is moving to tight end on the left side. Larry Brown is the tight end on the right side. Here we are with the quick pitch to the right side, the Blyer. Blyer controls the football, but he's nailed. He can't get the first down, short of the 45-yard line. He was hit by Jeff Seaman, the middle linebacker. The pitch that time seemed to be a little tough for Blyer to handle it, but handle it he did, but he may have lost just a, an instant of his movement there and waiting for the football and he was nailed at the 46 yard line and is now fourth down a yard and a half and will have to punt well he would have been nailed for a loss of several yards had he not made a nifty juke on nate wright but uh, he was downed eventually by a hard strong tackle so what do we have we have bobby walden out there to punt they've got their receivers scattered all over the field jackie wallace is in the middle mccullum is to the far side of the near side is nate wright and here is Walden standing at his own 41, the snap of the football, and Walden gets the kick away, angling it, appearing to go to the far side, but coming down the middle, taken inside the 10-yard line. It's the 7 Sam McCullough is nailed. He took the football and went down as he was covered very quickly, downfield by Sam Davis. A 46-yard punt for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Make that a 40-yard punt for the Steelers. Donnie Shell was down there, too. And the Super Bowl continues after this brief timeout.
So far, this scoreless ball game has been like two heavyweights leaning on one another, hitting to the to the ribs, hitting to the midsection, trying to see who will give. Friend Tarkenton, the quarterback, with two running backs, Foreman and Osborne. He gives the ball to, to Foreman. Foreman leaps going over the left side of the line, and he makes it forward to the 10. That will be his longest gain of the afternoon, a three-yard pickup with Andy Russell, the right side linebacker, making the stop. Gain of about three yards on the play. They move the football to the 10-yard line. It will be second down and seven yards to go. And you have the way, the feeling that the way this football game is going, the two defenses slugging it out, that a break could very well decide it. For example, a nice bumble here on this second down play at the 10-yard line. All right, let's see what he can do now from his own 10-yard line. Clark lines them up. Split end to the left flanker, set to the right side. Tarkenton calling the signals. And here's Tarkenton handing it off. There's a fumble. The ball is loose. Tarkenton goes for it in the end zone. It's an automatic safety. Two points. The handoff was bobbled. It went back into the end zone. Tarkenton recovered it to prevent the touchdown. As Lambert came into covering, it was an automatic safety. He recovered it in the end zone. Two points. Pittsburgh and the Steelers have a 2 nothing lead in the Super Bowl. And what did I say? I said a break with that very well beside this game. I said, for example, a nice sweet fumble on this second down play at the 10-yard line. Tarkenton on the handoff hit his running back on the hip with the football. It squirted loose. The Steelers couldn't get it. Tarkenton did, but he got it just inside the end zone, and the Steelers have taken a 2 to nothing lead. And would it be something if we end up with a 2 to nothing Super Bowl? I, for one, will take it. Yeah, Petra, well, this is something. This is, like I said before, two big heavyweights just leaning on each other. Some people may say, hey, that's another dull Super Bowl. Look at that. They play almost a whole half and no score. But I'll tell you something. From where I'm sitting up upstairs at Tulane Stadium in New Orleans, there is some ferocious hitting going down on that field. Wouldn't you say so, Jack? Absolutely. It's just a magnificent football game in every respect. And here's Ishide punting it. And it is wobbly. And they're letting it bounce. For some reason, Harrison did not get under the football. The ball is free, and it goes out of bounds on the far side of the field, chased by Harrison. I'm not exactly sure what Reggie was doing, whether he misjudged the football or thought that the back behind him would come forward to catch it. A 44-yard punt. And that was a free ball. And then Reggie Harrison pursued it out of bounds to the far side at the 35-yard line. For some reason, they let it land in between them. Yes, they failed to take advantage of an opportunity there because when the other team is free kicking, uh, you've got a chance for a nice return and right back into their territory, but the Steelers didn't do it. All right, it's first down and 10 yards to go. The Vikings with a regular four and a linebacker. Wally Hilgenberg pulled up on the right side. The handoff fake to Frank, or rather fake to Franco, and he flips the pass out to the far side to Blyer, and Blyer takes it and steps out of bounds at the 40. Roy Winston covered the play. Bradshaw, a neat fake to Franco Harris. So neat that I almost missed it and could not remember that Franco's name was Franco. And he flipped it out to Blyer, and Blyer shooting out of the backfield took it for a five-yard gain to the 40. Well executed, second down five. And uh, Rocky Blyer was having trouble with that turf, as have several ball players, and he did a great job to hold on to the football because he was having trouble keeping his footing. At the Pittsburgh 40-yard line, it is second down and five yards to go. 6.55 to play in the second quarter. And the handoff to Franco Harris coming to the left. They have him by the arm. He's still fighting, and he comes down at the 42-yard line. Franco Harris is corralled by Wally Hilgenberg, who had him by the arm and managed to hold him to two yards after he got hold of that arm. And he moves the ball to the 42-yard line. They place it down with the nose just short of the 42. It is third down and three yards to go for the Steelers. Third and three at their own 42. Harris is 10 carries for 34 yards. And it's a kind of a long three, so don't be at all surprised if Bradshaw goes to the air. All right, we're out of the huddle. Stallworth to the left and Lynn Swan wide to the right is the flanker. Running backs are Blyer and Harris. Bradshaw steps in. Four-man front for Minnesota. Bradshaw flips it into the left flat to Stallworth, and Stallworth is nailed. Going nowhere on the play. Jackie Wallace there to get him at the 36-yard line. No protection for him that time as Wallace, who has played a tremendously effective defensive game this afternoon, Nails our man back at the 36, and it's going to be fourth down, and here comes Bobby Walden. Yes, Jackie Wallace is playing himself a ball game. He's a six foot three, 197 pound cornerback, just a rookie out of Arizona, but he sure is not scared by this Super Bowl. Not that rookie. 
Okay, Bobby Walden standing at his own 23-yard line. Jackie Wallace is deep, and the up receiver is Nate Wright from Minnesota. Walden waiting for the snap. He takes it and gets that punt away. And it's a beauty. Booming downfield. Nate Wright backs up to take it at the 14, coming back to the 20, and he is going under. Special team doing a great job on the coverage downfield, and Wright makes it back to the 20-yard line. 49-yard punt and a return of five yards. It was Sam McCullum, not Wright. McCullum brings it back, and Reggie Garrett gets the first hit on him. McCullum, the receiver. The Steeler kick coverage has been excellent today. Now, that time, the Steelers failed to take advantage of uh, Minnesota's free kick but uh, and, and had to punt, but their kick coverage came through, so Minnesota's only at their 20-yard line. Minnesota has it at its own 20, first and 10. Tarkenton, the quarterback. Tarkenton fakes, rolls right. He's looking, looking, looking. Now throwing back to the far side, and it's too high. They throw a flag. Bill Blunt will be charged with interference on John Gilliam. No way Gilliam could get that football, but nonetheless, he had him by the shoulders with the ball coming through the air, and we get interference. And the ball is moved forward to the 35-yard line. It's a 15-yard gain on the interference penalty against Blunt. And, of course, what's in everybody's mind is, hey, uh, Mel, you said throw it my way, and I'll show you what I'm made of, but you can't hold the guy. 5-10 to go in the second quarter. Pittsburgh leading 2 to nothing. Here's Tarkenton calling the signals. Tarkenton takes. Tarkenton gives the ball up to Osborne, and he is nailed going to the left side by Dwight White. A loss of two yards on the play. Osborne is having some kind of an afternoon thus far. They're marking the ball at the 34-yard line. They're being very generous, as Mad Dog was right there. And Lambert and White had him corralled, and White brought him down. That's not a bad-looking case of pleurisy I'm watching down there. Cough on him a little, Mad Dog. Osborne, five carries for one yard on the afternoon. Net. Slot left formation. They put Gilliam in the slot and bring Foreman as a flanker to the right side. And Tarkenton rolls right at the 30. Here he is firing downfield, completing it to Foreman at the Pittsburgh 45. At the sideline, he steps out of bounds, covered by J.T. Thomas. And that should be good for a first down. It is very close. A play calculated to move the ball up to the sticks. And Foreman came to the 45. And let's see whether or not he has it. He could be inches short. They'll have to measure from the far side. Depends on exactly where they marked the football as he stepped out of bounds at the near side. And he did a very nice job of uh, keeping his feet in bounds. He had that eye on the ball and also on the sideline as soon as he caught it. And uh, that's the way you got to run those sideline patterns. Foreman's second catch of the afternoon. Gilliam had one. Osborne had one. Foreman has had two as the Vikings go four for 13 in passing. The Steelers are five for nine. Steelers with five first down, the Vikes with three, and Pittsburgh leading two to nothing. The margin of lead, a fumble, recovered by Fran Tarkenton about a yard back in the Minnesota end zone for an automatic safety. And now they're looking down in front of the Viking bench. We are screened off from uh, the situation. They're looking very closely. It appears that Minnesota is going to have to run a third down play with inches to go. Literally. And, of course, Fran Tarkenton has known since very early in this game that he has got to throw that football. And uh, that's pretty much what the Steelers want him to have to do. Stop that running attack. Make him throw it. Make him think that's the only way he's going to win this ball game. Maybe he'll win it that way. But that's what teams strive for, solid teams. The Steelers' defense today has just been super against the Minnesota run. Tarkenton looks at a third down situation with inches to go just inside his own 45-yard line. As Mick Tinglehoff goes over the football, now the official steps in and stops them. Vikings had already broken out of their huddle, but they're getting things set up on the far side of the field as the sticks are back in place. Now Minnesota is going to go back and get into its huddle again. And the Steelers... Take the time to get another defensive grouping and talk over the situation. Andy Russell, the defensive captain, has a word with him, and now they deploy. Stu Voigt and Doug Kingsrider are both in there, a couple of tight ends. And they have Grady Alderman in. And they're very tight. 
Kingsrider is a flanker close on the right side, and the handoff is to Foreman, and he hits in there, but he'll get it, but just barely. Foreman hits across the 45. He gets one yard on the carry as he hit right into the middle of the Pittsburgh line, and he got his first down, the center of the defensive line making the stop. But it is good for a first down for the Minnesota Vikings, and the clock is turning with four minutes and 14 seconds to play in the second quarter. Minnesota, first and 10 at its own 46. Well, okay, the Vikings have plenty of time to score, no question about that. In fact, uh, no, with the exception of the fumble, I guess this would be their best field position of the afternoon. Sure it would. All right, here comes Minnesota with a slot man out to the left side. That's Gilliam. Foreman to the right. Tarkenton rolling right. Tarkenton looking. And Elsie's after him. Tarkenton throws it away. Now, where's the official? It is ruled incomplete. He throws it to nobody. He throws it to absolutely nobody. At the Pittsburgh 45-yard line, there wasn't anybody within 10 or 15 yards except the people on the bench. And the official looks at it and stands there and signals incomplete. I don't care if it is the Super Bowl or if it's a preseason game. It's a bad rule. It's poorly enforced. Well, there's no question about it. He just dumped the football. L.C. Greenwood was on him, about to nail him. But Mr. Tarkenton, who has not been sacked at all today, except if you call the safety uh, a form of sack, Mr. Tarkenton was just going to get rid of that football. He's been under great pressure from the Steelers, but uh, has not been sacked once. Four for 14. He was looking for Foreman, couldn't find him. If you're going to call interference on us, you've got to call grounding the football on Tarkenton. They didn't do it. Parkinson at his own 46, gives the ball off, and Chuck Foreman dives forward. He'll get a couple of yards as they try the running game again, and it goes nowhere. Hit right into the center of the Steeler defense, and they advance the football to the 47-yard line, White and Holmes. At the bottom of the play, it is going to be third down and eight yards to go. He threw the ball to nobody. He threw it to nobody right in front of the Minnesota bench. He might have been throwing it to a substitute guard that was standing in front of the bench. And that official, standing right on the play, an incomplete pass. My father's mustache. Slot left, flanker right. A miserable call. One setback. Parkinson ready to go, third and eight. Parkinson winds up, fires, it's in and out of the arms of Foreman. Now he takes it out of the air, holds it, and goes to the Pittsburgh 36-yard line. Chuck Foreman on a slant in the wide position, stopped by J.T. Thomas and Mike Wagner. And he did a brilliant job of controlling the football as he handled a high hard one. It went out of his hands into the air. He pulled it in, went for a 17-yard gain. And Minnesota has a first down at the Pittsburgh 35 and a half yard line. It is first and 10 for the Vikings. Their fifth first down of the afternoon. Foreman has now caught three passes in a row. Minnesota in the eye formation. Parkinson, the quarterback, first and 10. Tarkenton giving the ball to Foreman, and Foreman weaves his way over the right side of the line and dives forward for his best game of the afternoon. He's stopped by L.C. Greenwood, but he will pick up almost five yards on the play, and that is their best gainer of the afternoon. They're marking the ball at the 31-yard line, second down and five. And Joe Green very narrowly missed throwing Foreman, actually, for a two-yard loss on that play. He managed to escape Joe, so he got a few yards out of the play, which is more than those Minnesota running backs who have been accustomed to getting today. We have a break in the Super Bowl action. We'll be right back. Two minutes to play in the first half of the ball game. Pittsburgh leading two to nothing. The Vikings are at the Steelers' 31 and a half yard line. Chuck Foreman has carried six times for eight yards. He has caught three passes for 39 yards. He is not taking those coming out of the backfield. He is lining up as a flanker. Three for 39 receiving, so he is leading them in both areas. And that would indicate how much the Vikings are relying on the passing game using Foreman from the flanker position. And here is Tarkenton faking, rolling right. They're after him. He gets rid of the football, and it is caught at the sideline, and they rule it. A legal interception at the Pittsburgh 28-yard line. Stu Voigt makes the catch coming to the near side of the field. And they mark the ball in at the 28-yard line, and again, Tarkenton was under a powerful rush, but managed to get rid of the football to Voigt. That time, Arrow had Holmes putting the pressure on him, and they, it was a good call on the sidelines. He did manage to stay in bounds. So the tight end makes his first catch of the afternoon. And they are now 6 for 16 in their passing game. They pick up 8 yards on the play. It is third down and 2. A minute 55, the clock stops on the out-of-bounds step 
by the receiver. Tarkenton is the quarterback. Tarkenton fakes again, rolls right. Now stops and throws short to the 25-yard line. It is complete to Osborne, who is immediately belted down by Jack Lambert. Now this is going to be very near to a first down again. It is a first down at the 25-yard line. So the Minnesota Vikings have picked up a first down. As the short passing game, this time hitting Osborne coming out of the backfield, his second catch of the afternoon. Just barely making the first down by inches. We see 126 left on the clock. 124. Vikings with the first down at the Steeler 25. Tarkenton 7 for 17 passing for 64 yards. And Tarkenton drops straight back. Tarkenton looks and fires down the middle. And there is the broken up. Taken out of the air by Bill Flint. Coming over the 5, the 10. The pass was in the arms of John Gilliam. He was hit and the ball squirted straight up in the air. Bill Blunt pulled it in. The hit was made by Glenn Edwards, the free safety. He hammered the receiver, Gilliam. The ball went straight up in the air like a jack-in-the-box. And coming under it was Blunt. And the Pittsburgh Steelers have the ball back at their own 10-yard line. You bet Shamel Blunt, who said, give me some action and I'll win the MVP award. He was right there like he knew where that ball was going to land. Straight up in the air and down into Mel's arms and the Steelers continue to hold their 2 to nothing lead. They spot the ball at the nine and a half yard line. First down 10 and the Steelers have it back. They shift flyer off the top of the eye to the left side. Bradshaw calling the signals gives the ball to Frank. No, he faked it again. Here's Terry running back to the right side. A man goes down to the ground. Bradshaw's trapped. They're after him. He's still on his feet and he goes down at the nine yard line. Running this way and back that way and then this way again. And finally he was brought down. And the tackle made by Jim Marshall, the defensive end for the Minnesota Vikings. And they've called timeout to stop the clock with 56 seconds remaining in this first half. And the Steelers have the ball second down now and about 10 and a half yards to go as Terry finally was trapped for a half yard loss. And let's just go back to that big play and what a hit Glenn Edwards put on John Gilliam. You betcha he belted that guy and knocked that ball straight up in the air and five yards back right to Mel Blunt who saved the bacon. We now see we see 56 seconds remaining on the clock uh, before we reach the stage where this game will be four and a half innings old. In other words, halftime. The Steelers beat two to nothing. <laughs> Sounds like a hockey game, too. Yeah. All right, the ball is at the nine and a half yard line, second down and a long 10. 56 seconds remaining to play before the intermission. And believe me, these people who have collected in here today have seen some kind of a football show, although the score is two to nothing. And the score coming on a safety as Tarkenton lost control of the football on a handoff with the line of scrimmage at the 10 and then managed to recover it back in the end zone. Bradshaw this afternoon thus far is 5 for 9 passing for 49 yards. And he's carried twice for 11 yards net. All right, we're ready to go. Here's Franco with the ball coming off the left side, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, and is out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Franco Harris coming over the left side, and Paul Krause finally corralled him at the near side of the field. 24-yard carry for Franco Harris, and the Steelers come out of deep trouble and move the football now to the 34-yard line, first and 10 with 49 seconds. No downfield blocks. Franco just turning it on. Sheer speed, finding daylight out, running the pursuers. Steelers break out of the huddle. They deploy Stallworth to the left and Swan to the right. Their running backs are Blyer and Harris set wide. The tight end is Larry Brown. Bradshaw takes the football, gives it to Blyer, and Blyer is hit solidly by Jeff Seaman who plugged the gap up the middle. Nowhere to go. And there's going to be a loss of a yard on the play as Rocky took the football, and there was Jeff Seaman, 230-pound middle linebacker from Stanford, to plug the gap and stop the play. Second down 11. We pause now for station identification. Steelers are letting the clock turn. It is down to 15 seconds. Bradshaw drops back. Bradshaw runs with the football, running forward over the 30, the 35, the 40, up to the 45. He's hit, breaks the tackle, still running with the football, and he's up to the 50-yard line, fights his way across into Minnesota territory. He's still running. They have whistled the play dead, and Bradshaw is still running. Bradshaw was never put down in the turf. Bradshaw goes off the field on the far side and slams the ball down into the dirt. 
out of that stack of men in the middle of the field. Jim Marshall and Roy Winston were there. He merged Terry Bradshaw with the football, but the play had been whistled dead. A 17-yard game to midfield. And they're leaving the field, and the Steeler fans are standing and applauding. Ladies and gentlemen, Super Bowl IX at New Orleans, Louisiana. We're at the end of the first half with a score. Pittsburgh 2, Minnesota nothing. Here's the second half kickoff. All right, it is a bad one bouncing downfield inside the 30. It is fumbled by the Minnesota Vikings, and they die for it at the 30-yard line. The Steelers have the football. Steelers have the football. Bill Brown tried to pick it up, could not hold it. Marv Kellum recovered. They took me by surprise. We're still trying to clear away our working area. I was looking off to my right here, and J.D. Signal, they kicked it, and Myron, tell me what happened on the kick. Roy Gerona fell, kicking the ball. He slipped and fell, coming up to the ball. He made a lousy kick, and it turned into a great break for the Steelers. More of Kellum recovery. Holy smokes. They have the ball at the Minnesota 31. Hand off to Rocky Blyer. Puts his head down, hitting him to the right side, and gets nothing but about a half yard. Carl Eller was there to meet him. There's nothing but utter confusion here, although they're handling it, I think, very well in the extremely cramped and crowded facilities of Tulane Stadium. They're doing a great job, but nonetheless, there's a bit of confusion, and we have five seats fitted into space to hold about four, and in the process of getting everybody back in the booth, we have to move everything around, but we're in location now. Here's a hand off to Franco off the left side of the 25, the 20, the 15, he's going to the 10, to the sideline and out of bounds. Forced out by Carl Eller at the six-yard line. Franco Harris breaking off the left side. Looking to be open the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Paul Kraus was over there along with Carl Eller. As they forced him out of bounds. 24-yard carry for Franco Harris. The Steelers first and ten at the Minnesota six. Put the big step for him on. Kraus got a good block from Star Wars. First down at the six-yard line. Gary Larson is in as a fifth defensive lineman. Krause is out. It is first and goal to go at the sixth. Bradshaw gives the ball to Franco. Running to the right. They've got him back at the eight in the yard line. Wally Hilgenberg played him perfectly. Along with Jeff Stevens. So they corral Franco. And it's going to be all the way back to the nine yard line. Harris going into that play with 14 carries, 83 yards. Ball is back at the nine. Does that include that one? That includes that play. At the nine-yard line, Harris, 14 carries, 83 yards on the afternoon. It is now second down and nine. At the Minnesota nine, the Steelers leading two to nothing. Here's Flyer shifting off the top of the eye. And Bradshaw giving it to Harris, getting a key block from Mullins, running to the left, turning the corner. He's in there for a touchdown for Pittsburgh. Jerry Mullins gave him the block. Mullins pulling and blocking for Franco Harris. Harris running wide to the left. Swung into the end zone for the touchdown. And the Steelers are on the board with their first TD of the afternoon. Right linebacker Wally Hilgenberg, ex-Steeler. He was the only guy who could have stopped Franco. Jerry Mullins putting a perfect block on him. Flattening Hilgenberg. Franco sailing into the corner of the end zone. And the Steelers out in front eight to nothing. Jarella trying for the point after. Walden, the holder. And the ball is down. Jarella kicks it. It is good. Flag down. Our place kicking game this afternoon thus far has been a disaster. I'll tell you, Bobby Walden holding for a field goal. Drops the snap. Jarella wide on another field goal attempt. Freddie Cox wide for the Vikings on his field goal attempt. Let's see what this is all about. Vikings offside. Is that what he signaled? The Vikings were offside. Was the kick good? Kick was good. What is the problem? Well, they're uh, penalizing the Vikings half the distance to the goal line. Offside, Vikings. Apparently the kick was no good. All right, Jarello will try it over again with Bobby Walden, the holder, at the eight-yard line. Walden puts it down. Jarello kicks it. 
It is good. So we got the point. The Steelers lead nine to nothing. There's a break in the Super Bowl action. We'll be right back. Durello will kick off left to right. McClanahan and McCullum are deep for the Vikings. McCullum to the left, McClanahan to the right. Steelers leading nine to nothing. And we're just into the third quarter of action. Here is Jarella kicking it. High and pretty good with the win. And it's taken by McCullum. Coming out over the 5, the 10, the 15, the 20. Look out for the 25, and he's caught on a last-ditch stand that by Lauren Taves and brought down at the 29-yard line. It appeared that he was about to break loose. They will set the ball back at the 28 on a 25-yard return by McCullum. And it will be first down 10 for the Vikings as they operate into the wind here in the third quarter. The bikes are coming out of the huddle. Sending Jim Lash to the right and putting John Gilliam in the slot to the right side. Foreman and Osborne are the running backs. The quarterback is Francis Tarkenton and he gives the ball off to Osborne and Osborne hitting into the right side gets a yard. Ernie Holmes there to nail him. Dave Osborne, a 10-year veteran from North Dakota. Found running space for one yard. They've got Charles Goodrum at left tackle, Andy Marr at left guard, Mick Tinglehoff at center, Ed White at right guard, Ron Yerry, seven-year veteran from Southern Cal at right tackle. Lash and Gilliam are the wide receivers. Boyd is the tight end. Second down, nine. That'll give him almost two yards. Let's make it two. Second down, eight. They were generous. At the 30, Tarkenton on a pivot, hands off to Foreman, and Foreman on a cross buck to the right side will get a yard. Joe Green and L.C. Greenwood right there, and Tarkenton barely got rid of the football on the inside handoff to Foreman. I tell you, it's looking ludicrous. Those Minnesota ball carriers just cannot gain more than a yard against the Steelers. Here we are with 12 minutes remaining in the third quarter, and they've gained a total of only 12 yards all told, I calculate. They had 11 in the first half, and they just gained a yard. Lauren Taves is on as a fourth linebacker. Ernie Holmes is off the field. Minnesota in a slot left formation. The running backs wide, and Tarkenton rolls to the left. Tarkenton fires, completes it to the 35 to Foreman, and Foreman goes down as he slips at the 38. Andy Russell covered him. And again, there is trouble with the footing as Foreman took the football and slipped and went down. And one thing we overlooked and did not mention was a thunderstorm in the middle of the night last night. And that one came in the dead of night, and that did add to the footing problems out here today. But in order to be aware of that one, you had to be up in the middle of the night. Who was the one who told me about it? What would you be doing up in the middle of the night in New Orleans? I have no idea what anybody would be doing anywhere. They're measuring now for the first down, and the Vikings are short of it at the 38-yard line. For Foreman, that is his fourth catch of the afternoon. Four for 45 yards, and he's been working from a flanker position. Minnesota at its own 37-and-a-half-yard line. Third down, and very short yardage to go. Brady Alderman. He's in there. Second tight end, Doug Kingsrider. It is fourth down. I beg your pardon. And they're going to go for it. At their 37 and a half yard line. They're crazy. Tight formation. Very tight. Fourth down. Strictly power. And here is Parkinson. A long count. Long, yeah. long count. The Steelers come over and make contact. Now what is the ruling going to be? The officials let Tarkenton count and count and count. And the Steelers came across and made contact. And the officials are conferring. The Steelers want a penalty against the Vikes. And the Vikes are signaling, uh, we're going to get five. What do you think, Mary? Well, it's the old trick Chuck Noel used to use, where you just keep counting and hope you pull them offside and get your first on that way. If not, well, you take a delay of the game and then punt anyhow. But uh, let's see how they call this thing. They're keeping the ball right where it is. I can't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank O'Connor's touchdown was his sixth touchdown in NFL playoff history. They're having uh, a discussion, and now... 
Now the Vikings are going to punt. They run their punting team out. There have been some things happening. I can't think yeah, of Yeah, uh, Mike Eyesight is in there. No penalty being marched off. Uh, no penalties being called against both teams even that would nullify one another. But here we get the punt. All right, punt formation. Eyeshide from his own 24. Gets a bad snap and gets it away. Into the wind. Lynn Swan takes it at his own 20. Swan running to the left, giving ground back to the 20 again. He's trapped at the 25 and caught at the 27 and brought down. Well, here we are better, better than four minutes into the second half, and the Minnesota Vikings ground attack has gained a total of 14 yards against the Steelers. Front four, well, let's call it the Steeler defense, but that front four is just so tough up there, it's almost incredible. Well, there was a mystery play there when Fran Tarkenton tried to draw the Steelers offside. I saw somebody on the left side of the Steeler line, I think it was Joe Green, finally get up and point and walk across the line, but we got no penalty there, and now the Steelers have it at their own 25-yard line, make it the 26. Harris comes over the right side, Leach comes to the 30 and on up to the 34, fumbles the football, and there's a dive for it. They're diving for the football as Harris lost it as he went down at the 35, just over the 35-yard line. And the Steelers maintain the football. That will be the third fumble of the afternoon for the Steelers with one loss. And they're just short of a first down. Well, Franco fumbled the ball, and Alan Page had a chance to get it. In fact, he had his mitts on it, but it bounced back to Franco. Franco was the guy who ended up recovering his own fumble. Alan Page made the defensive play. Harris is 16 carries for 100 yards on the afternoon. 100 yards. They give to Franco up the middle, and he dives forward to the 40-yard line, plowing. And Franco Harris takes it with Roy Winston on the stop. And he has the first down, the 10th of the afternoon for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who lead the Minnesota Vikings 9 to nothing. And Jack, I think that pounding that the Steelers have been giving the Vikings is beginning to take its toll. I think the Vikings are beginning to soften up just a little bit. All right, Terry Bradshaw brings them out of the huddle, lines them up in the eye formation, and they shift. Blyer left, Franco Harris right. And here is Bradshaw stopping short, throwing to the far side of the field, completing the pass to John Stallworth at the 46-yard line. Stallworth is immediately brought down by Jackie Wallace. But it's a nice gainer on the play. Stallworth was a little disgusted that he went down short of the first down. But Stallworth has stopped three passes for 23 yards. That one a gain of eight yards, second down and two. And by the way, he's playing with the thumb on his right hand, heavily taped. He stoved it in practice this week. Chaz no minimized it, but he stoved it pretty bad. Second down and two. Flanker right, split into the left. Swan and Stallworth wide to hand off to Harris, and he fights his way through people right up the middle over the 50. Cuts back and goes to the Minnesota 48-yard line with Roy Winston on the stop. And the Steelers have pile drive their way back into Minnesota territory. I'm not forgetting a nice pass reception by John Stallworth that contributed a solid eight yards. So here they are at the Minnesota 48-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go, leading nine to nothing. 8.47 on a turning clock in the third quarter of Super Bowl IX at New Orleans, Tulane Stadium. Bradshaw calling the signal, shifts them out of the eye again. Running backs, Blyer and Harris. And the give, a fake to Franco. Bradshaw is deep, he spins away from the tackler. Running to the right with the football. And coming up over the 50 and out of bounds on the near side and into the Minnesota bench area. And coming over and trying to nail him out of bounds was Alan Page. And Page almost wound up with a mouthful of splinters as he went into the benches. And Wally Hilgenberg is the guy who had Bradshaw deep in the backfield, in the pocket, swung him around in a full circle, as a matter of fact. Bradshaw, strong as a horse, got away, then got a saving block in the backfield from John Cole and took off for a game. He picks up four yards on the play, second down and six. And Bradshaw showed them some kind of running. His power that time took him through the Minnesota bench area, just out of the reach of Alan Page. Stallworth and Swat are wide. The tight end is Larry Brown. Quarterback is Terry Bradshaw. Bradshaw, quarterback sneak, coming forward with the football, and he may have a yard or two. That's all Sutherland and Page on the stop. And Bradshaw thought he might catch them napping up the middle. 
But no way that time as Minnesota was ready and waiting for him. Give him a yard. It's going to be third down and about four and a half yards to go. Terry is five carries for 32 yards. And Minnesota brings in two extra secondary men. Bob Lertzema comes in to go into that five-man defensive line. And they'll have a 5-6. Okay, they dig in for a five-man rush and six secondary men to protect against the pass on third four and a half. Bradshaw, the quarterback for the Steelers, with 7.40 to play in the third quarter of action. Bradshaw gives it to Blyer. Blyer's nailed. Coming into the middle, Carl Eller met him. And down he goes. Rocky Blyer taking the handoff, and Eller was waiting. 247 pounds. The 11-year veteran hit him straight up, and down went the rock. No gain on the play, so fourth down, and Bobby Walden will punt the football for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Minnesota is going to drop two men back. Jackie Wallace will be back there along with Sam McCullum. And they're also sending Nate Wright back. Wallace in the middle, Wright to his right, and Wallace to his left. Walden is standing at his own 45-yard line in punt formation. The snap of the football to Bobby Walden, and he gets it away. High and very wobbly. Coming down inside the 10, bouncing for the end zone, and it gets in there. Steelers were driving downfield trying to stop it, but not quite. Marv Kellum tried to get to it to tap it out, a 43-yard punt, and it goes into the end zone. The Vikings will take over at their own 20-yard line. And, of course, that's the tactic that some Steeler fans disagree with. They'd like to see Bobby Walden punting for the sidelines, punting out of bounds, but most times he will simply try to drop it in there inside the 10-yard line. It didn't work. It went into the end zone. First down, 10 yards to go. The Vikings with the football. Slot right formation. Here's Tarkenton giving the ball to Foreman, and he's up it on a beautiful low tackle. He fumbled the football. It's going to be ruled dead. Andy Russell driving in there to upend Foreman. Russell is running back and forth to shake something out. Russell wants relief. Russell is injured. He's going off the field under his own power, and Lauren Taves comes on to give Andy help. Andy's shaken up on the play. The loss is back to the 19-yard line, second down, 11. He lost the football, but it was dead. Dead on impact with the ground. Slot right again. Tarkenton rolling right. Tarkenton throwing it again, blocked back into Tarkenton's hands, and now he's firing long downfield. He's got an open man. Gillian takes the ball at the 47, coming over the 50 to the Pittsburgh 45 and down to the 40. Flag down on the play. Greenwood blocked the pass, and I L.C. Greenwood and right back to Tarkinson. Now, he cannot throw that football there because I just can't do it, and the flag is down. They covered 41 yards <laughs> illegally. <laughs> L.C. Greenwood again, and that has been one of the third time amazing today. items this afternoon. The third time, the way he's going up in the air, and it's not like he's right on top of him. He might be four or five yards back, high up in the air, blocked that one back. Tarkinson took it. And I was thinking of our Joe Gillum getting one of those earlier in the season, but he ran with it. He didn't throw it again. That's he, right. He Here's that man it. with 14 years' experience that doesn't know he can't do that. This, this game, L.C. Greenwood's game, three block passes today. The only thing it puts me in mind of right off the bat is Dwight White against Oakland in a regular season game, 1973. Remember? Intercepting passes on top of the Oakland quarterback. So it is third down and 11. Third and 11. Tarkenton ready to go to work. Tarkenton gives the handoff and breaking up the middle is Dave Osborne. Osborne drives out to the 30-yard line. That is the first really good gainer they've had all afternoon. Ham and Tames made the tackle. And Minnesota has managed to run to a first down. And that is just about, that run equals practically their entire rushing yardage for the afternoon. Gary, do we have some fast figures on that? Total of 24 yards rushing, and what did he gain there, 9? 11. Ed Bradley is into the linebacking core, replacing Jack Lambert. We have Bradley and Taves both in there. And the Minnesota Vikings are ready to go to work. From their own 30, Tarkenton hands the ball off. <laughs> A straight-ahead drive is unsuccessful. It is Dave Osborne stopped straight up by Ernie Holmes. 
came shooting into the right side of the line and ran into the arms of Arrowhead. He gets a yard out of the play. And it's going to be second down and nine yards to go as Osborne found nowhere to go. Four minutes and 54 seconds. The clock is turning. The Steelers lead the Vikings nine to nothing in what has been a good football game. Here comes Lash wide to the left. And they send Gilliam out to the right in the flanker position. And now they bring Foreman in motion to the left. And the handoff is given to Osborne, the single running back, and he's nailed. Right there to get it was L.C. Greenwood. Back at the 27-yard line. Osborne completely unprotected, and Greenwood made the play on him. And the Steeler fans are chanting defense. So the loss of some four yards. Good strong four yards makes it third down now and 13 yards to go. And the Steelers charged with the responsibility of shutting Minnesota off on the vital third down play with long yardage. Here is Jim Lash wide to the left. John Gilliam set out to the right. Parkinson the quarterback. Parkinson rolling right. And he gets rid of the football, completes the pass upfield. Still Boyd at the 42 over the 50. Goes down to the Steeler 45-yard line. Glenn Edwards made the stop on him as Voight, the tight end, ran diagonally through the Pittsburgh secondary to take the pass. Around the 47-yard line, a 27-yard game, and the Vikings have moved the football to the Steeler 45, and the official wants time now as the Vikings go into the huddle, and he signals for the clock to start. That is Voight's second reception of the afternoon. They are 9 for 21. Parkinson sets them in the eye formation. Flanker right, split end to the left. Handing off to Foreman, and Foreman is nailed by Andy Russell, or rather Ed Bradley, the middle linebacker. Bradley firing through there to nail Chuck Foreman for a loss of about two yards. Back to the 47-yard line. And, Jack, no team in the Super Bowl has ever been shut out. No team, no Super Bowl team has ever suffered that embarrassment. The Steelers right now are pitching possibly the first shutout in Super Bowl history. But we're so far from it. 15 far from minutes it. to go plus 247 in this quarter. And it is now second down and 12 for the Minnesota Vikings at the Pittsburgh 47. And Tarkenton rolls left. Parkinson looking, looking, now throwing blocks again, take it out of the air. Great fight block to Joe Green, took it out of the air for the interception, and now penalty marker goes down. Great fight blocks it. Joe Green caught it out of the air. And the penalty marker goes down at the Minnesota 45. As Green brings the ball down and out of bounds on the near side of the field in front of the Viking bench area. And man, their pass rush is just something else. And one of the rare times Tarkenton is seen running to his left to throw, rolling to his left, a rear maneuver for him. So it gave Dwight White his opportunity. He blocked it. The ball went forward a few yards right into Joe Green's hands, and Joe Green took off. We've got a clipping call, though, and it moves the Steelers back to their own 39-yard line. Second interception on Tarkenton. So a vital turnover as the Steelers take it back and they give us a clipping call. We've been hit with 75 yards in penalty. We go to work at the 39 and a half yard line. Setting Lynn Swan up to the right and John Stallworth wide to the left to the far side. They shift out of the eye formation. Terry Bradshaw, the quarterback, giving to Franco. Big hole over the left side. Franco slants off tackle, goes to the 45 yard line. Running into the arms of Jeff Seaman. Helped out on the play by Paul Krause. And he carries the ball to the 45-yard line, a gain of five and a half yards. Two minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Steelers leading nine to nothing, and no question about it, the mini Vikes defense is softening, has been softening for some time now in the second half. Second down and a long four for the Steelers. At their own 45 and a half yard line. Here's the handoff, and it is Franco Harris diving straight ahead. And he'll get about a yard on the play to the 46-yard line. Roy Winston and Alan Page team up on the stop. Harris has carried 20 times for 117 yards on the afternoon. The Vikings, 18 carries for 19 yards. That's the whole Viking running core. Minute 24, the clock is turning in the third quarter. Pittsburgh 9, Minnesota nothing. 
Terry Bradshaw sets his club on third down. Bradshaw's back, fires, intercepted at the Minnesota 45. Here's Jeff Stevens coming over the 50 and brought down at the Pittsburgh 46-yard line by Rocky Blyer. But there was a penalty marker down. Minnesota was offside. The Vikings were offside. That nullifies the interception. Carl Eller, left defensive end, was the guy called for the offsides. I'm quite sure there was a question in my mind whether he had moved forward far enough. They say he did, and they're penalizing the Vikes. That pass intended for Stallworth, intercepted, but the interception wipe dies. Five-yard penalty moves it to the Minnesota 49 for a first down for Pittsburgh. Now there is the kind of big, big, big break that you need. We've seen both sides come up with them from time to time this afternoon. All right, Bradshaw has them at the Minnesota 49 to give to Harris, and Harris tries the left side, cutting in towards center, and he'll go for a couple of yards. Doug Sutherland on the stop for the Minnesota Vikings. They have the ball at the 48-yard line, a gain of second yard, uh, of two down, a gain of two yards, second down, and eight. I'm not excited. Out of the huddle. Kolb, Clack, Mansfield, Mullins, and Gravel, the interior lineman, down for Pittsburgh. Bradshaw almost casually steps up behind Ray Mansfield, shifts them out of the eye formation, and I think we had movement by Pittsburgh. The handoff is to Franco, running to the left, cuts back, and goes forward to the 45. Thought I detected a man moving ahead of the snap, but apparently not, because it was right in front of the official to the far side of the field. Carl Eller made the tackle for Minnesota. And they have the ball at the 45, and here they come on with extra back. Bob Lertzema comes into the five-man line, and Terry Brown and Randy Potal come into their secondary, giving them six defensive backs. And it is third down and six yards to go. Third and six. And we're at the end of the third quarter. The score, Pittsburgh nine, Minnesota nothing. Pitched in the Super Bowl, that was the fewest number of points a losing team has ever had in this ball game. The Steelers today absolutely brutalizing Fran Tarkenton's Minnesota offense. What are the rushing figures, Jack? 18 carries for Minnesota, 19 yards. Pittsburgh, 37 carries, 195 yards. Minnesota, 9 for 22, passing 98 yards. Pittsburgh, 5 for 7, 48 yards. And the Steelers now move right to left into the win. At the Minnesota 45-yard line, third and six. Bradshaw goes deep. Bradshaw firing to the far side, and it's in and out of the arms of Larry Brown at the Minnesota 35-yard line. He was a step in front of Terry Brown. They're in that uh, 56 defense. And in this particular defense, Bob Lertzema comes in, and they rush five people. They also bring in two defensive backs, Terry Brown and Randy Podal. All three linebackers go to the bench. And Minnesota signs one back to each of the five eligible receivers, man-to-man, -man, and they leave Paul Krause deep. And it worked that time. The pass was incomplete. Walden is on to punt. Bobby standing in his own 42. Wallace and McCullum are deep. Here is Bobby Walden getting a high, very wobbly, and relatively short punt away, and it's fielded on a fair catch at the 23-yard line by Jackie Wallace. Minnesota has the football at its own 23-and-a-half-yard line. On a 22-yard punt by Bobby Walden, it is first down 10 for the Vikings. The Steelers leading 9 to nothing without surprises, doing just what they had more or less promised to do, which is stop the Vikings cold with their superb defense and send Franco up the middle, jam it down their throats, and score their points that way. That's the way they've done it today, and they lead in this ballgame 9 to nothing. First down 10 at their own 23 and a half yard line, a single running back. Chuck Foreman is in a flanker position and Tarkenton is back to throw. Tarkenton up the middle, completes the pass to the 31 yard line. Foreman breaks the tackle, gives ground, goes behind the 30 and then comes back to the 29. Chuck Foreman caught it, gave ground, Ernie Holmes hit him and he came back to the 29 yard line. Give them a gain of five yards on the play. A long five, second down, and a short five to go. I wish they would turn off the music, Byron. Yeah, do we... Hey, Andy Russell's still out of the ball game, isn't he, Jack? Yeah, but That's he's, what the he's running, uh, running over there in the bench area. 
Foreman has cut five for 51 yards on the afternoon. Parkinson hands off to Foreman and diving in there. They have him. No blood pulls him down. Blood comes driving through, pursued him, and made a diving tackle around the shoulders, and down he went. Yes, Mel Blunt driving right over guard Andy Marr to make that play. Mel Blunt, a very good play. Marr, a guy who was traded in midseason to the Vikings by the New Orleans Saints. Right here from New Orleans to Minnesota. Now he's back again. That play, Mel Blunt made him look bad. Dwight White has been taken off the field and is getting attention. He has played some kind of a game. Holy Steve Furness replaces him, the third-year man from Rhode Island. So we've got three frontliners out of there, Russell Lambert and White right now. And Minnesota has the football. And Tarkenton is back. Tarkenton is throwing, and it is tipped. It was not on target up at the 43. Edwards tipped it. Foreman was the intended receiver. It was off target, and Glenn Edwards tipped it. And listen to this crowd respond to the Steeler defenders. Holy cow, fine save by Glenn Edwards, leaping backwards with one hand, getting that hand on the football. Beautiful save on a pass that was on target to Chuck Foreman. Swan and Edwards deep, I shine, standing at his own 15-yard line in punt formation. 13-16 to go in the ball game. And here is the punt. Gets it away. And it's coming down to Swan at his own 35. He gallops forward over the 40. He's to the 45, and he's racked up as he crosses the 45-yard line. And the tackle made by Mick Tinglehoff. The punt, 36 yards. The return, 11 yards for Lynn Swan. Now we have a break in the Super Bowl action, and we'll be right back. White White is on the far bench over there, and they've bundled him up in blankets. And one by one, the defensive players have gone back to shake hands with him and to put their arm around him. He's bundled up back there and may be finished for the afternoon. But, boy, he's done. Here's a fumble on the handoff. Franco Harris loses the football, and it is picked up by Minnesota. Handoff went from Bradshaw to Harris on a slant left. And he could not hold on to the football. Recovered by Paul Krause as he crossed the line of scrimmage. And the football got away from him. So Minnesota takes over the football at the Pittsburgh 48-yard line. That is the fourth fumble of the afternoon for the Steelers. So another one of those vital breaks that we talked about. And that one was simply a football that would not be handled. Got away from Franco, and the Vikings recover. Now they're ready to go at the 48-yard line, first and 10. Parkinson has them in the eye. Parkinson fakes. He's back to throw and firing the bomb. Downfield going for the big play, and it is incomplete. And they throw a penalty marker down. Calling pass interference on Mike Wagner, who was covering John Gilliam. Another ironic situation in that Gilliam was out of bounds when the thing came into his arm. No way that it could have been caught in fair territory. Pass interference rule. And that's going to take the ball to the Steeler five-yard line. 43 yards on the penalty. You betcha, and doggone, the Vikings got the break on the fumble recovery when the Steelers are having to play Three reserves in the defense, Taves, Furness, and Bradley. And now the Vikes are down at the five-yard line. Dwight White is not through. He's back in there. They bunch the defense up front at the five. Parkinson calling the signals. Parkinson gives the ball to Chuck, Chuck Foreman, and he fumbles it. The ball is picked up by Pittsburgh. Joe Green picks it up. Now what is the ruling going to be? They're ruling Pittsburgh's ball. Foreman carried the ball, lost it was picked off by the Steelers. Joe Green took it and started running with it. And they ruled that the Steelers have taken the ball back for the Vikings at the six and a half yard line. And these great big plays just keep swaying back and forth across this gridiron. Joe Green with one interception, one fumble recovery. If there's ever been a better defensive performance in the Super Bowl, I'd like you to name it. So Pittsburgh gets another chance at its own six and a half yard line. Bradshaw shifts them out of the eye. Gives the ball to Franco. Hesitates, comes off the right side, out over the 10 and on near the 15 yard line. Beautiful execution. Just Seaman and Wally Hilgenberg make the stop. Just a little misdirection on the play. 
to cross them up, and he came over the right side, and they're out to the 15. It is going to be second down and to about two and a half yards to go. And when I said that, I meant by a team, not just by Joe Green. LC's played good, all of them have. I mean a team defense, greatest performance in Super Bowl history, I think. Second down two. Here is Bradshaw to Harris, and Harris having trouble finding running room to the right, and brought down along the 15-yard line, Roy Winston and Alan Page, the big guy trying to get up ahead of steam and find an opening through which he can run so it's going to be third down now and a yard and a half to go he picked up about a half yard on the play got about a yard and a half to go clock is turning with 11 minutes and 43 seconds to play and Pittsburgh leading 9 to nothing a first half safety as Fran Tarkenton lost the ball on the handoff from the 10 yard line and fell on it in the end zone and then the weird kickoff to start the second half and Pittsburgh on the running of Franco Harris going on in from 30 yards out Franco carrying it over from the 9 here's the handoff to Rocky and Rocky finds no running room in the middle of the line big guy Alan Page had him with the shoulders and pulled him down along the line of scrimmage so the Steelers cannot get the vital first down at this point and the Vikings just simply bunched their defense up against the run and stopped the Steelers. And now Bobby Walden will be called upon to punt into that win. Jackie Wallace is going deep. At the moment, he's going to be back there all alone. So they may be getting ready for a big rush on Walden. Walden standing at his own two-yard line, and they're getting ready to come after him. Walden's waiting. There's the snap of the football. And it is blocked. Bobby Wallace put his block to the city end zone for a Minnesota touchdown. Jerry Brown recovered it in the end zone. As they threw most everybody up front. Put the single receiver back and put the great rush on. And they've seen this work. Or at least heard about it working earlier. Now we got two Vikings out here wrestling each other in the middle of the field. The Minnesota Vikings. Matt Blair and Fred McNeil just simply wrestling each other and they broke through there and blocked the punt. And it was scooped up by Terry Brown in the end zone for the touchdown and Minnesota has turned it around. And this thing has just been going like we told you back and forth. Fred Cox will try for the point after. His holder is Paul Krause at the 10-yard line. The ball is down. He kicks it and hits the crossbar and he misses it. It hits the crossbar and he misses it. What do you think about this football game? It's 9-6 as Fred Cox on the extra point. Hits the, not the crossbar, the, the upright, upright. The upright. The, the one that runs perpendicular. Up and down, up and down. Yeah, the right hit. upright. On his left, he hit it beautifully. Fred Cox did it. Jarellas, Jarellas, try up again. Come on, City, Freddy. We love you, but choke. And that might turn out to be one heck of a big point, wouldn't you say? Holy cow. So it's 9-6, to six Steelers. 10 minutes and 33 seconds remaining in this ball game. Well, everybody knew that Minnesota also had a fine defense, that there were two fine defenses down on the field, and their defense came through. But now the Vikings can only tie the Steelers with the field goal. There went the shutout. The first one in history. All right, here's the kick. Coming down short. Field it inside. The 20 by Reggie Harrison out over the 25 to 30. He needs a block. He's to the 34 and is ridden out of bounds at the 34-yard line on the far side of the field. Reggie Harrison returned the kickoff. And the tackle on him was made by Brent McClenahan. 14-yard return of the kickoff. Larry Zonka, 145 yards a year ago rushing. Franco Harris, 130. He needs 15 to tie Zonka. But more importantly, we need to put points on the board. All right, the inside handoff to Harris, and they're ready and waiting. Jeff Steven nails him. Harris will struggle for a yard. He'll get maybe a half yard. No loss on the play, but Jeff Steven hits Harris on the handoff to the right side. So perhaps that score has fired up the Vikings' defense. Eller, Sutherland, Page, and Marshall up front. Winston, Seaman, and Hilgenberg, the backers. Wright and Wallace on the corners. And Jeff Wright and Krause are the safeties. Second and ten. 
Flanker right, split end to the left. They give to Franco, coming to the left, cutting back. He keeps his footing, comes to the 40, drives out to the 42-yard line. Carl Eller finally made the stop as Harris showed great balance. Hit at the line of scrimmage, kept his footing, and came charging forward. And Eller finally put the stopper on him at the 42. He picks up eight vital yards. And the critics say Super Bowl. Oh, that's a dull ball game. Well, it's not a dull ball game today. Mayor Shep, Pete Clarity, every Steeler fan here on down. They're biting their nails to the finish. All right, we got a Viking 4-3 defense. Brad Shaw, the Steeler quarterback. Brad Shaw is ready to go. Got two yards to go on third down. He's going to pass. And Terry Bradshaw fires. And it's caught at the 40. Holy smokes, Glenn Edwards is down to the 30-yard line. And his fumble, his Larry Brown has fumbled the football, and the Vikings are recovered. Larry Brown caught it. And now, and they're saying it is Pittsburgh's ball. The ball was blown dead. 31-yard pass and run. The defensive man overplayed. Jeff Wright tried for the interception. It sailed over his head. I got so excited I had Glenn Edwards catching it. Edwards is on the sidelines. Larry Brown caught it. Took it to the 28. He lost it, but it was dead when he hit the ground. So the completed pass takes it to the Minnesota 28-yard line. Now for Larry Brown. That is his second catch of the afternoon. It is Pittsburgh's fifth. Well, it won't be charged as a fumble because the ball was dead. So there's no fumble. And now the Minnesota fans come to life. And the Steeler fans come to life. And the handoff goes to Blyer with a flag down. Rocky cracks down over the 25 and onto the 23-yard line. And there may have been some motion in there. Paul Krause made the tackle for Minnesota. And there was illegal motion on the part of the Steelers. So Minnesota has the option. And the Vikings will take the five-yard mark-off. A total of 123 yards in penalties against the Steelers this afternoon. It's going to be first down and 15 for the Steelers at the Minnesota Vikings 33-yard line. And with 8.48 to play, the thing we need right now is a touchdown. Swan to the right. Stallworth to the left. They shift out of the eye formation. Brad Shaw's the quarterback. Brad Shaw gives the ball to Blyer, and Blyer tries the middle and finds no running room whatsoever. Stop coming up the middle by Doug Sutherland of the Vikings. And Alan Page. So they put the ball down at the 33. Let's see, are they going to mark it back to the 34-yard line? No gain, no loss. Second down and 15 yards to go. Pittsburgh leading 9-6. to six. Eight minutes and 20 seconds on a turning clock. Bradshaw brings them out of the huddle. At the Minnesota. 33 and a half yard line. Bradshaw gives the Blyer over the right side. He's got over the 25, the 20. He's ripping all the way down to the 16 yard line. Rocky Blyer found the hole that time over the right side. And Paul Krause finally made the tackle. 18 yard carry for Blyer. Taking the ball to the Minnesota 16 and a half yard line for the Steelers 13th first down of the afternoon. And Blyer just smelling that open space for running. Going through there and turning it on. 7.35 to play. Pittsburgh leading by three. Nine to six. Bradshaw shifting. Franco about three steps to the right. Hand off to Franco. He hits him in the middle. Carries Ben with him. He's digging all the way down to the 12-yard line. Franco Harris takes the ball down to the 12-yard line. Carl Eller had him around the ankles. Gain of four yards on the play. Second down and six yards to go. And Franco is very near to that record, which was set by Larry Zonka a year ago. He has 142 yards in the ball game. Zonka racked up 145 last year. Second down and six. At the Minnesota Viking 12. Clock turning at 643. 
Bradshaw giving it to Franco. Tripped up as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Manages to fight his way down to the 11-yard line. He'll get one yard out of the play as Seaman and Winston, the linebackers, make the stop. And the ball is at the Minnesota 11. But now it is third down and five yards to go. Third and five for the Pittsburgh Steelers. At the Minnesota 11-yard line, as the Steelers lead at 9-6 to six in one of the greatest Super Bowl battles ever. Flanker right split end to the left. The running back set extremely wide. Bradshaw comes back to pass. Look, he fires to Rocky down at the six-yard line and hits him for the first down. Rocky was wide open coming out of the backfield. You can see it unfolding as he spotted Blair and hit him with the pass that takes the ball to the Minnesota five-and-a-half-yard line. Paul Krause made the tackle, but not before Blair had the first down at the Minnesota five-and-a-half-yard line. The eighth pass completed this afternoon by Bradshaw, who's thrown only 13 times, and the second catch for Rocky Blyer. And you can see it coming. Blyer is, or rather Bradshaw, is 8 for 13 and 86 yards on the afternoon. Two tight ends. Flanker wide to the right. Pittsburgh ready to go. Hand off to Franco, pile driving through the middle, and he's down to at least the three-yard line. Franco Harris from the six. And let's see where they stop it. They give him uh, three yards down to the three-yard line. Gain of three yards. That brings his total up to 145 on the afternoon on 29 carries, and he has tied the record set by Zonka a year ago. Second down and three yards to go. Moon Mullins playing tight end to the left. Larry Brown, the tight end to the right. The flanker set out to the right side. Minnesota in a goal line defense. Hand off to Franco coming to the left. Hesitates and comes forward and will lose a yard. They gang tackle him at the four-yard line as he could not find the running room he needed. Alan Page and Jackie Wallace at the bottom of the play for the Vikings. One-yard loss. So his net yardage on the afternoon drops back a yard. And the ball is at the four-yard line. And Paul Krause comes back out on the field. Wally Hilgenberg goes off. It is third down and four yards to go at the Minnesota four. And the clock is turning with three minutes and 49 seconds to play. Super Bowl nine, Pittsburgh leading Minnesota nine to six. At the four-yard line, the Steelers needing a touchdown. Bradshaw steps under center. Here is Bradshaw rolling right. Bradshaw gets a big block and fires into the end zone, complete for the touchdown, hitting Larry Brown in the end zone. He got a great block from Franco Harris. And they had to protect against Bradshaw continuing on to the end zone. And they let up just enough on Larry Brown. And Bradshaw fired to him in the end zone for the TD. On a roll out to the right side. A great block by Franco Harris protecting Terry Bradshaw. And Bradshaw fired to Larry Brown in the end zone. For the touchdown, and the Steelers lead 15 to 6. Larry Brown has caught three passes for 41 yards. And now the touchdown. First touchdown by passing this afternoon. Franco ran nine yards for one. Minnesota got its only touchdown on a blocked punt. 66-yard drive. 11 plays. 15 to 6 is the score. Roy Girella will try for the point after. Bobby Walden is the holder. Right near the 10-yard line. Here's the snap. The ball is down. Girella kicks it. It is good. It is good. And the Steelers lead the Vikings 16-6 to with three minutes and 31 seconds remaining to play in the ball game. Holy smokes. The Super Bowl continues after this brief timeout. Okay, Bradshaw is down 9 for 14. 96 yards and one touchdown. Jarella will kick off for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers have increased their lead to 16-6. to 
They came into this ball game as a slight favorite. Here is Jarella kicking off. High into the wind, and it will come down short. Bouncing. And it picked up at the 17-yard line. McClanahan running. Come over the 25, the 30, the 35. And he drives out to the 39-yard line, where the tackle is made by Jim Allen, the rookie from UCLA. A 19-yard return. And Minnesota has the football at its own 39-yard line. First down 10 with 3 minutes and 20 seconds to play in the ball game. And the Vikings. Frail in this game by 10 points. 10 points even. They deploy Gilliam to the right and Lash to the left. They operate out of the eye formation. Tarkenton rolls left. Tarkenton looks. He fires downfield. It'll be intercepted. Mike Wagner at the 35. Back over the 40. The 45 cuts back. Comes over the 50. The Minnesota 45. Wagner holding on to the football. Goes down at the Minnesota 42-yard line. Jim Lash made the tackle as Mike Wagner... Intercepted Fred Tarkenton's bomb downfield. And Wagner carries it all the way back to the Minnesota 41-yard line. The third interception this afternoon. All for the hand of the Georgia Peach. Tarkenton 10 for 25, 104 yards, but three interceptions. And Wagner comes up with a big one. And the Pittsburgh defense, just something else. And now with 3.07 to go. The Steelers at the Minnesota 41. First down 10. Lynn Swan to the right, Stallworth to the left. And isn't it something that these two rookie wide receivers who played so well in the preseason wind up in here at this strategic part of this big ball game. Franco Harris carries and manages to pick up a couple of yards just off the left side. Paul Krause made the stop. Harris has 146 yards total rushing. A yard more than Larry Zonka had a year ago in the game against Minnesota in which he set the record at 145. Here are the Steelers back over the football. Clock is down to 234 and turning. At the Minnesota 39, second and eight. Bradshaw takes. Gives it to Franco. Trying to get over the left side is caught and thrown. Jim Marshall was there to get him. No loss on the play. Wally Hilgenberg. Also on it for Minnesota. Clock coming down to 2 minutes and 15 seconds. And the ball is being spotted at the Minnesota 38-yard line. Hanko, uh, Franco is up to 147 in 32 carries. Zonka carried 33 times for his 145. And now we come down to the 2-minute warning. And with a break in the Super Bowl action, we'll be right back. They have now got uh, Franco with 33 carries. We had him with 32. He has 33, which ties Zonka's carry. Zonka set the record for the number of carries last year. Franco has 147 yards. Larry Zonka had 145. At the Minnesota 38-yard line, two minutes to play. Clock will start on the snap. Third down, seven. Pittsburgh in a double slot to the left, leaving a single setback, Franco Harris. All right, Bradshaw gives it deep to Harris, running to the right, cuts back, down over the 35, the 30, the 30, 25, and down to the 23-yard line. Perfectly executed. Wally Hilgenberg made the tackle. And Franco has got the Super Bowl rushing record for the Horns. 158 yards on 34 carries. The Vikings take time to stop the clock. But Pittsburgh has picked up a vital first down at the Minnesota 23-yard line with a minute and 40 seconds to play. And the Vikings are about to go under for the third time in the Super Bowl. They're announcing now that Franco has a Super Bowl rushing record. As we've been keeping you abreast of it throughout the second half of this game. The ball is at the Minnesota 23. Now we've made elaborate plans to go to Myron Cope on the sidelines over to Steeler bench area. The only problem is we haven't found Cope. And I think Cope has just been submerged over there somewhere. I can't see for the life of me how he would ever manage to get out on that field because every entry, every exit is clogged with people. And these Steeler fans have gradually in this fourth quarter moved down to the edge. And I think that they are going to go crazy. This team will have trouble getting off the field. 
They're standing and chanting. All right, Bradshaw brings them up to the line of scrimmage with a minute 40 to play. All right, Bradshaw gives the ball to Blyer. Blyer finds the opening as they were blitzing and brings it over the middle. Comes down over the 20 and onto the 17-yard line. Wally Hilgenberg in on that play along with Seaman. And down at the 17-yard line of the Vikings. Clock is down to a minute and 21. It is second down at four yards to go. Blyer has 15 carries for 64 yards. So between the two of them, they've gone well over 200 yards on the afternoon. Bradshaw brings his troops back up to the line of scrimmage with a minute to play. Pittsburgh leading 16 to 6. 49 carries, 222 for the two other here. Swan on the end around, and he's nailed back at the 25-yard line. Carl Eller made the stop, and Minnesota asked for timeout. On the end around, Swan took it, and he was out there like a sitting duck or a sitting swan, and he was nailed. But the play calculated to run off time. We're down to 51 seconds, and Minnesota has taken time to stop the clock. And the Steelers have the ball at the Minnesota 25-yard line. And it is third down now, and 12 yards to go. Third and 12 for the Steelers. 51 seconds to play on what you would call here in the South a bitterly cold afternoon. The temperature climbed to about 46 or 47. Has fallen off steadily into the upper 30s and with a wind blowing, gusting at times up to 25 miles an hour or better. Chill factor takes the temperature down. They've calculated to something like 22 degrees. And out there on the field, the Steelers a happy bunch. Lynn Swan was just holding his arms straight up in the air. Terry Bradshaw has a brief conference with Chuck Knoll and comes back. Out to the huddle. 51 seconds to go. 16 to 6 in favor of Pittsburgh. And the Steelers will cap off this fantastically interesting and amazing season with a Super Bowl victory and the ultimate championship, the world champions of pro football for the first time in their 42-year history. Hand off to Rocky. Over the right side, down over the 20, and he scoots on down to the 17-yard line. Rocky Blyer carries the football. Gary Larson on the tackle. Vikings are calling time again. This is their last. Ball is at the Vikings 17-yard line. It is fourth down and about four yards to go for Pittsburgh. Fourth and four at the Vikings 17. Vikings have used up their last time out. 41 seconds remaining. And Pittsburgh waiting to run out the final seconds of this Super Bowl game. The wind is blowing everything it can find out of the stands, and we just got everything pouring down on this playing field. So the closing moments of the game are going to be played with large pieces of plastic, scrap paper, pennants, everything else flying down on the field. Steelers ready to come out of the huddle. 41 seconds. The vital play here near the end of the ball game. The interception by Mike Wagner and his run back to the Viking 41-yard line. Handoff is to Blyer, and Blyer running to the left is nailed. Black at the, uh, back at the Viking 23-yard line. A loss on the play. Wally Hilgenberg made the tackle. And the Vikings will take over with 37 seconds remaining. And here is the Steeler... Defense being cheered by the crowd as it comes back out on the field. The offense being cheered as it comes off the field, one way or the other. 37 seconds. And these Steeler fans are ready to break loose. And it's hard for me to see how they're going to contain them. Vikings come out of the huddle. 37 seconds to go. Slot right formation. Single setback. Tarkenton. Back to throw. Lobs it. And he throws it away over the head of Dave Osborne coming out of the backfield. L.C. Greenwood had that rush on him again. And Greenwood points to Tarkenton as Tarkenton goes back into the huddle. And all afternoon, Greenwood has been coming in along with Green. They've been waving those arms up high, bouncing in the air, giving Tarkenton difficulty in releasing the ball. And that time, he overthrew an easy target out to his right. 26 passes tried, 10 of them completed. Three intercepted. 
Osborne comes out of the ball game, and Oscar Reed is in. Oscar Reed is on the field. 33 seconds remaining. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Vikings at their own 23. And Tarkenton, swing pass to the left side, completes it at the 15-yard line. Oscar Reed, he's nailed as he comes to the 20. Lauren Taves was there to get him as he came up to the 20. L.C. Greenwood was all the way over there. So now the clock continues to turn. And you got the count down to a championship. It's down to 12 seconds. People in the stands are chatting. Minnesota knows the time has run out. Tarkenton turns to go off the field. It's all over. And listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Time has run out. The Steelers are the Super Bowl champions of 1975. The 74 season capped off with this great victory and the world championship. And somehow they're containing most of the fans as the teams are making their way out. And believe me, those gold and black stocking caps predominate down at the edge of the field. It's the end of the Super Bowl with the final score, Pittsburgh 16, Minnesota 6.